The worst ice storm in 30 years to hit this area has kept thousands of people at home today watching the Cotton Bowl game on television. Hello, everybody. I'm Lindsey Nelson with Paul Horning here in Dallas. When Notre Dame was preparing for this game, they figured against a somewhat porous pass defense of Houston, they might ride the strong right arm of Joe Montana. Well, actually, it'll be a balanced attack. They've got good running in Vegas Ferguson and Jerome Heavens, but you're right, Lindsey. That's the key right there, the comeback kid, Joe Montana who accounted for over 2,000 yards passing and 10 touchdowns. On the other side of the coin, the very quick feet of Houston quarterback Danny Davis. He runs the veer as well as any quarterback who has ever been in that offense. 1,500 yards total offense this year. And actually, I think the question with this slippery field is whether or not Houston will be able to run their veer offense. Field condition and weather are a big factor to check on that now. Let's go down to Frank Lieber. Lindsay, I guess cold is just a state of mind here in Texas, but I'll tell you, it is cold. This will go down as the iciest cotton bowl in history. As you mentioned, the worst ice storm in 30 years has hit this city. Some 50,000 homes were out of electricity. It was that bad yesterday. It has left its mark in the field. Right now, the game time temperature is 22 degrees, and there's an 18 mile per hour wind out of the north. Now, that adds up to a chill factor of six degrees below zero. And that's what these two teams are going to be playing in this afternoon. And it's going to be a problem, obviously, as to whether or not they're going to display their uh, talents to their full capabilities. The field, well, it's not a good field to begin with. It's an old artificial turf field, and uh, they're going to tear it up after the Cotton Bowl game. And after, of course, the season is over, it will be torn up, it will be replaced. It is threadbare. It is icy in spots this afternoon. And, uh, well, one of the big problems the teams are going to have, what they're going to wear. And we did check with both equipment managers, and both teams have decided on this type of shoe. This is called the Gripper. It is a shoe designed for artificial turf and for a wet artificial turf service. That's what we have right now. Now, it is conceivable that it could freeze before the afternoon is out. And one thing that may be significant is the fact that Houston has packed cleats and they could change to cleats if necessary at halftime. Notre Dame has not brought along any cleats, so they'll have to stick with this gripper type shoe for the remainder of the afternoon. The crowd is still filing in here at the Cotton Bowl. The game officially is a sellout, but uh, nevertheless, chances are we're gonna have well below a sellout in attendance this afternoon. We we're talking to Wilbur Evans. Uh, Wilbur has been the executive director of this game for, well, 34 years. He's seen 34 Cotton Bowl games, and uh, he has uh, retired last year, and he said this is probably the worst conditions that he's ever seen for a Cotton Bowl game, and the only one that he could actually compare to this would go back to 1947. That year, Arkansas played LSU. Y.A. Tittle was playing quarterback, as a matter of fact, for LSU. And that game wound up a nothing, nothing tie. The temperature has been cooler in the past for Cotton Bowl games. We've had it down in the teens, but we've never had the combination of the ice and the wind and the chill factor, which right now, as we said, is six degrees below zero. Both teams have uh, prepared in Dallas for, well, Notre Dame has been down here now for 10 days getting ready for this game. Houston has been here for just four or five days. Ironically, it's been a very, very mild fall and winter so far here in Dallas and it didn't turn cold until Saturday. You probably noticed that during the CBS telecast of the Dallas Cowboys game with the Atlanta Falcons. The precipitation didn't fall until Saturday night. But this city is completely in ice right now and a good many people are without power, without electricity. The teams are coming on the field as you can see behind us. The Fighting Irish of Notre Dame with their head coach, Dan Devine, they'll be in white this afternoon. And the Houston Cougars, the Southwest Conference champions, will be in red. And everybody will be chilly. There is no question about that. There's going to be a lot of slipping and sliding going on on the floor of the turf. Here, as 1979 gets underway in Dallas, Texas. It's a lot chillier in this part of the country, we understand, than it is up in New York and probably in even parts of Alaska. Snow flurry started to fall here within the last hour here at the Cotton Bowl, but the, uh, the prognostication is for the weather to clear later on in the day, and the temperature probably will get down to uh, something like seven or eight degrees in Dallas tonight. It should stay around the 20 mark for most of the afternoon, and as we said, there's a good possibility that the, uh, that the uh, field may freeze before this ball game is out. 
Whether that affects uh, Notre Dame more than it affects Houston remains to be seen. It'll be a test uh, for both teams, really, to survive this 1979 Cotton Bowl game. It's the 43rd Cotton Bowl in history, and as we said, it will go down, certainly, as one of the chilliest. Fans uh, try to keep themselves warm with uh, virtually everything at their uh, disposal, and it is not easy at all this afternoon because that wind is brisk. It is out of the north as we await the arrival now of the Houston Cougars, the Fighting Irish are on the field. We'll have the, the uh, invocation and the toss of the coin momentarily. And here come the Cougars and their head coach, Bill Yeoman. Following the custom of the Southwest Conference, the Cotton Bowl Classic will be opened by a prayer, followed by the national anthem, sung by recording star Larry Gatlin. He will be accompanied by the Temple High School Band, directed by Derwin Howard. The invocation will be given by Mr. Crockett English, who has been long associated with the Cotton Bowl Athletic Association as a committee man. Will you please rise? Good and everlasting God, hear our prayer of praise and supplication. We praise thee for thy boundless gifts to all mankind, and for thy presence with us today. Protect these young men from harm and guide them through a rewarding experience. Keep each of us from acts unkind to fellow man and unsightly to thee. Protect America and lead us to be as thou would have us to be, as in thy name we pray. Amen. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hail at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight o'er the ramparts we watch were so gallantly streaming and the National Anthem sung here at the Cotton Bowl, and now, as soon as the field has been cleared, 
The officials will be coming out for the toss of the coin, and the referee assigned here this afternoon is Pete Williams. The umpire is Harvey Hardy. The headlinesman is Robert Gaston. The line judge is Robert Caldwell. The field judge is Joe Delaney, and the back judge is Gordon Pettis. The 43rd annual Cotton Bowl game on a cold day in Dallas, Texas. Said by many to be the coldest since the 1947 game in which Arkansas and LSU played to a nothing-nothing tie here in Dallas. There's Dan Devine on the sidelines, the head coach of the University of Notre Dame. And see, last night I was talking to Bill Yeomans, the coach of Houston. He said, Paul, we very definitely need a pretty good foot footing for the Veer offense. If we cannot get traction, we might as well go home. And this field was not covered as Frank Glaber told you early in the broadcast, and it was swept off this morning, but it looks like it's pretty good. All right, Pete Williams now is down there in the center of the field, the referee. Captain Montana, Captain Heavens, Captain Darling. What you make Captain Davis, Captain Murphy? It's just Captain Heavens. Are you not answering any other official, please? Mr. Pettis will be our bad judge. Mr. Taylor will be a line judge. Mr. Bevel Jess and our head linesman. Pete Williams is making the introductions there of the other officials about whom we told you a moment ago. He has introduced the captains to each other, and very shortly he will be tossing the coin. Shows it to each of them now. And now the coin is tossed. And he will give us an indication in just a moment. You want to defend that guard, you want to kick. You want to kick. You want to defend that guard. I thought this might happen, Lizzie. It looks right. as if Notre Dame has won the toss, and I think they're going to elect to defend a goal I rather than right. kick or receive. I think you're right. They want that win. It's about a 20 mile an hour wind blowing from the left to right of your screen. It's They're Bob, still getting it straightened out. It's Bob Golick and Jerome Heavens, 55 and 30. Notre Dame has won the toss, and they have elected to defend that goal. That is their election, to defend that goal. And Houston with the alternate election now. Is electing to kick off. Absolutely. They made a, might have made a little mistake there, Lindsay, because the wind, as I said, we've got a 20 mile an hour wind blowing from left to right. So Notre Dame will be going against the wind in the first quarter. The lights have been turned on here at the Cotton Bowl before the kickoff as they go back for their final huddles and you will notice throughout the afternoon that most everyone stationed down there will have gone to the cupboard to pull out all the foul weather gear that they could find for the elements of the afternoon. The Houston Cougars, champions of the Southwest Conference. The champion of the Southwest Conference is the host team in the Cotton Bowl game. Kenny Hatfield, Normally does the kicking off for the Houston Cougars, as you see Bob Golick there, along with Reggie Harrison talking to Coach Dan Devine. And uh, see, he wants to recheck that coin toss. He does. I think they. Uh, I they, think Paul is right. I think there was a little confusion absolutely. there. Absolutely, they wanted the wind in the first quarter. Then Notre Dame, in the second half would have had that opportunity. Most normally, uh, Houston would have elected to receive in the second half. Then they would have had their choice of the wind in the second half also. This is reminiscent of the famous coin toss in which Abner Haynes said, I'll kick to the clock. It's Bob too late Gullick. now. It is definitely too late. Pete Williams, the referee, coming back up field now and uh, Devine is still out there. He's calling Golik back over again for a little more confirmation. Yeah, Dan's pointing back to his left. He wants to right, his first defend choice that goal. Was to defend that goal and kick off. And I said, you can't have both choices. You may defend or choose to kick off. All right, so that's what you want. That's the first thing he said. And then he said, then I said, you will receive. I said, no, you can kick or receive. He said, well, he said, I want to kick them. So. 
<laughs> his first choice was to defend that gold. Is that the way you want it? Yes, sir. All right, then. His first choice is to defend that gold. Did they go kick off this way? Wait a minute now. Will the captain? No. All right. I mixed up on the option. You got this gold. You may kick our receiver. Now we're going to go over again. Let me get that straight right now. Bob Goldick apparently told the referee he would defend the north goal and kick off. And the referee said, you can't do both. You get one option, so which will you do? So then he took goal, and now Houston has the alternate we're option. Kick from this way. We're going this way. All right, now. Okay. His first choice, his first choice was, I want to defend that goal. And I, and I turned to him and said, you want to kick or receive? And he says, I want to defend that goal and kick. I said, you can't have both choices. And then he got confused and he said, well, then I have to kick and everything. So they're going to defend that goal. I don't blame Bill Yeoman right here. No, they're going to defend. You have a chance to kick or receive. Okay. He says, we'll kick. Notre Dame was teeing the ball up. And they had Steve Cicci out there to kick, and that is he right there. But uh, Bill Yeoman said, no, Notre Dame is going to defend the North goal. Well, the confusion came in when Bob Golick, he was listening to the instruction of the referee. He wanted to defend a certain goal, and he also wanted to kick, and you cannot have both options. All he would have to say is, we want to defend this goal and let Houston make up its mind. Oh, but that's too simple, That's Bob. too simple, right? Remember Abner Haynes from I the do. old Dallas Texans? I do. Sudden death for Hank Stram's team? Said, we'll kick to the clock. <laughs> to kick off. So they're kicking off. So Houston says, we'll kick off. So Notre Dame <laughs> takes the kicking team off the field. They'll send the receiving team on the field. And that is Hatfield, who is teeing it up there now. Randy Harrison to be one of the deep men for Notre Dame. So Hatfield is tied up to shoe. Notre Dame deploys to receive. That is Harrison going deep. Back there with Stone. Jim Stone and Randy Harrison are the deep men on the kickoff return. Hatfield is teed it up on the 40-yard line. And very shortly, after some confusion about the choices result of the toss of the corn, we'll be able to get the Cotton Bowl game underway. And Hatfield puts it up. Stone. Now Harrison. Harrison at the 10-yard line to the 15 to the 20, 25. Harrison to the 30, 35, 40. Randy Harrison to the 50, 45, 40, 35. And Randy Harrison goes out of bounds at the 34-yard line of Houston. Elvis Bradley, number 20, the junior from Longview, pushed him out. And Notre Dame has excellent field position on the opening kickoff. First down and 10 yards to go now for the Fighting Irish. Joe Montana is the quarterback. And that'll run the attack. He's 141 for 260, 54.2%, 10 touchdowns and nine interceptions. A 56-yard return by Randy Harrison. Evans is the tailback, Buchanan is the fullback, and he moved it to the 31-yard line as Steve Bradham, the linebacker, came in to make the tackle. Jerome Evans, the starting tailback, who rushed for 728 yards and averaged 4.1. There is the backfield, Montana. Well, that's not the one they started, but that is the one they'll have in there a good part of the day. Uh, Matt Vegas Ferguson, the most valuable player in last year's Cotton Bowl, but they're starting the senior, Jerome Evans, who leads Career yards rushing, all-time leader for Notre Dame. Give it again to Jerome Evans. And he powers his way through. Almost to the 25-yard line as David Hodge, the junior from Clute, and Jose Taylor came in to make the tackle. Both had outstanding seasons for the Houston Cougars. As the Houston defensive line and the linebackers. Very quick secondary, Cook, Hatfield, Ebner, and Bradley. Here to his fullback, and Palace. Pete Palace carried the ball, and Bradham was in there to make the tackle. At the 25-yard line. 
Watch the Houston Cougar defense react just off tackle as Pete Palace, a senior, six foot two, 204, nowhere to go. And watch the red jerseys. Number one, Steve Bradham, a junior linebacker from Longview, filled the gap. Fourth down, Notre Dame will go for it. Palace is out of the ball game. Now Buchanan's in there at fullback. Fourth down, about a yard and a half to go. Evans, he stacked up. I don't think he made he it. He didn't make it. And the ball will go over to the Houston Cougars who have held and nullified a brilliant kickoff return by Notre Dame. So the Cougars are going to take the ball. Jose Taylor and Fred Snell were there on the tackle for Bill Yeoman's Cougars. They take it at their own 24-yard line. First down and 10 yards to go, and Danny Davis is in there to run the attack. His running backs are Emmett King and Randy Love. Both gained over 1,000 yards. There they are. The receivers, Herring, Adams, Jurgaitis, and the offensive line. The key, key to the Houston attack on the Vera offense is a lot of east-west running, whether or not they'll be able to cut on this slippery field. With the King. And Emmett King powers up to the 30-yard line before Bob Golick comes in to make the tackle. Gain of six will make it second down and four yards to go. Steve Heimkreider also on the tackle for Notre Dame. Here's the Notre Dame defense. Average Irish Weston, about, Calhoun, and Hankard. Average about 250 pounds in that front four for the Irish. Second down play coming for the Houston Cougars, champions at the Southwest Conference. Love. And he moved it up to the 35-yard line. Heimkreider, again coming in on the tackle. They take a long look now at first down yardage. John Hankard also on the tackle. Two great running backs for Houston. King gained 1,095 yards. There's the linebackers for Notre Dame. Heimkreider, Golick in the middle, All-American, and Bobby Leopold on the outside. They're going to measure for the possible first down here now. Artificial turf here at the Cotton Bowl. But the two running backs for Houston, Lindsay, very quick. They can break it at any time. King gained over a thousand yards. First, first and down. ten. And Randy Love, oh, right alongside of King, gained 1,019 yards. In fact, it's the first time in Southwest Conference history that two backs on the same team gained over 1,000. Randy Love averaged five yards a carry. Emmett King averaged six yards a carry. They're sending Eric. Heron to a far right. He had 23 catches. On a running room for King. Got a first and 10. It's up at the 48 yard line. Bobby Leopold finally brought him down. First and 10. A 13 yard pickup. Let's see if we can pick up the blocking on the left side. 66. Robert Jones, a sophomore from Tyler, Texas, takes care of the linebacker. And what a hole. Emmett King picks up 13 yards and another first down. Errol Clark has come into the backfield now. There's Emmett King. First down, 10 yards to go. As Love. Another big hole, and he goes through to the 42-yard line of Notre Dame before Bob Golick brought him down. Let's take Bob Golick right in the middle. That's one of his keys is the first. There's a center popping out. Dennis Greenewalt, the guard. And it's a big hole on the right side. 11-yard pickup, another first down. And Houston is taking it right to Notre Dame's defense. Houston has the ball first and 10 at the Notre Dame 42-yard line. Danny Davis, the quarterback. Gets it again to Love. He got through to the 38-yard line before John Hankett brought him down a gain of four yards. Jeff Weston also on the play. It'll be second down and six at the 38 for the Houston Cougar. Cougars. The first responsibility on the Vera defense, on the handoff, the defensive tackles must tackle the back who hits in there first. Then the defensive end has the quarterback, and the cornerback has the pitch back. It's three options for Danny Davis. Willis Adams and a wide left. Fumble. It was, got away. Emmett King had the ball fumbled, and Jay Case has recovered it for Notre Dame. Jay Case recovers for the Irish. Uh, this is a problem for Houston. Houston doesn't get beat by too many teams. They beat themselves, Lindsay. They had 44 fumbles on the year and lost 27 of them. And right here, 75, Jay Case 
the offside defensive end gets the football back for Notre Dame. First down and 10 yards to go. Now for the Irish, they have the ball at their own 34-yard line. Montana brings him up. Motion across. Give it to Palace, the fullback. Beat Palace. Push back as he got only a yard to the 35. Robert Oglesby, the nose guard. Along with Kenny Hatfield on the corner. Made the stop. It'll be second down and nine yards to go. Dan Devine with the foul weather gear along the sideline. Head coach of the Irish, finishing up his fourth year as head coach at Notre Dame. Second down, nine yards to go. Respotting the ball. Dave Huffman, who is from Dallas, comes over the ball. Montana. And it's incomplete. Joe Montana with an incompletion. And Steve Bradham was the man covering. It's going to be third down and nine at the 35-yard line. Well, Montana would love to have that one back. Dennis Grindinger, the tight end, little play action right, came back against the grain, was wide open. Third down play coming now for Notre Dame. Should have caught it. Little hands in the wide left. Chris Haynes is in the wide right, and the running backs are split. Montana dropping back. There's a screen right to Heavens. Heavens tries to back to the inside, to the 40, to the 45, to the 50. Jerome Heavens, 45, gets across the 40-yard line of Houston. It'll be first and 10, Notre Dame at the Houston 38-yard line. From the end zone, we're going to watch a screen set up to the right side. Pete Palace goes blocking on the left. Watch the screen set up. Jerome Heavens makes a great move. 26-yard pickup right here. He beats the linebacker to the inside. With good speed, he hasn't played the last couple of games uh, too much. Right, Lindsey? Heavens didn't play against Georgia Tech and saw limited action against SC. He looks like he's ready. Looks like he's ready. Vegas Ferguson has not been in the ball game so far. Palace and Heavens. That's Heavens from the tailback. Dives across the 35-yard line and up to the 34-yard line. A gain of four makes it second and six. Robert Oglesby in to make the tackle again. He's a junior from Fort Worth. He was a prep All-America at Arlington Heights. No score, we're in the first quarter. We have eight minutes, 58 seconds remaining to be played in this period. Dean Mastak is coming at tight end. Evans has carried four times for 12 yards. Double took, tight end. Took the screen pass, of course, for the big gainer. Detmer is in motion across. Montana has the ball. Palace incomplete, through his fullback. David Hodge was covering. All Southwest Conference linebacker and All-American. Well, he didn't have to throw it that hard, Lindsey. Very cold down there. Your hands really get cold on a day like this. Buchanan comes in at fullback now, and Palace goes off. Fullahan's going out to a wide left. Chris Haynes to a wide right. Buchanan's in the left set. Heavens in the right set for Montana. Joe Montana. Up the middle, and Mastak has it at the 15 to the 10. The freshman, Dean Mastak, goes to the five-yard line. Oh, what a great catch, Lindsey. He's a good target, six, four and a half, 225 pounds, and Montana's right on target. He split the backs, pro-type offense, goes back in the pocket. He's got his eye on the big tight end all the way. 28-yard pickup, first and goal at the six. No score, but the Irish are threatening here now in the first quarter. They've got Palace back in there at fullback. Jerome Heavens is the tailback. Houlihan in motion across. Jerome Heavens to the left side, but stacked up after a gain of a yard at the five. Darrell Wilkerson along with Steve Bradham in to make the tackle. Second down and goal to go. Notre Dame at the Houston five-yard line. I've been watching Steve Bradham, the junior out of Longview. He's very active in there, Lindsey, from the inside linebacker. Houston will be in the normal college defense of 5-2. Five, five defensive linemen and two inside linebackers. And they have to be quick, and they are. Second down, and goal to go at the five. Evans on the right set, Palace on the left. 
Motion across, that's Detmer. Palace, fullback Carrick, got a couple of yards to the three before David Hodge made the tackle. Third down and goal, Notre Dame at the Houston three-yard line. Houston won nine games, lost two this year. Notre Dame won eight, lost three. Notre Dame lost their first two and their last one. I'll tell you, it favors the team who has the wind. There's a lot of wind blowing left to right of your screen. Notre Dame must put some points on the board when they have the wind in the first quarter. Montana's rolling and looking and keeping, and Montana past the shoulder and touchdown, Notre Dame. Montana lowered the shoulder and got in for the touchdown. Watch Bowman here, number 74, the defensive end. He goes over and knocks and hits Montana right at the goal line. Let's see if he gets in. It's very close. Referee right there, he got over. And Montana goes in for Notre Dame's first score. There he is. A nice clean cut. Young man, nine plays, 66 yards, Lindsay. Took up three minutes and 41 seconds off that clock. Joe Yunus, who is from Dallas, Texas, will attempt the conversion. Chuck Mayo is disabled, and so Yunus is uh, doing the converting. Canaffle is holding for him. Canaffle puts it down and drops it. Canaffle tries to scramble for it. Mayo tries to get to it. All is still loose. The conversion is no good, and the play is ended. So the score is Notre Dame six and Houston nothing. And we have six minutes, 55 seconds left to play in the first quarter of the Cotton Bowl game here in Dallas, Texas. The Green Machine, they call it in South Bend. And now Notre Dame will be kicking off and Steve Cicci has teed the ball up on the 40 yard line. He's a freshman from Fargo. And dropping back to receive it, Terry Elston, number seven, Linnell Fee, number 15. There is the scoring drive. Montana, by the way, is two for four, 54 yards so far. CG puts it up. Elston at the six yard line. He's at the 10 at the 15. Terry Elston across the 20 and fumbles the ball at the 24 yard line. And Notre Dame has recovered. Notre Dame has recovered the fumble. Well, Elston on the special teams. He's a backup quarterback. He's trying to get over to the right side. He's got his two hands on the football here. He gets hit, coughs up the football. And I think it was Bob Crable, a linebacker, who got it back for ND. Crable was a late season ball hawk at Notre Dame and apparently was on that one too to give it first and 10 Notre Dame at the Houston 25 yard line. You'll recall the Houston Cougars were here year before last in the Cotton Bowl and they scored 21 points quickly against the University of Maryland. Cici made the hit, by the way, on that return. Vegas Ferguson is in there, but he was fake to Ferguson, and the pass was incomplete. Chris Haynes down the left sideline, the intended receiver. Heavens was in the fullback spot, and Ferguson the tailback in that set. Now yeah, they got the best two backs in there. Rendinger open again, Lindsay coming across. He dropped one earlier. He came back with the same play. It's wide open. I would be... I would get guessing here, Montana's going to keep that in mind. You'll see that play a couple more times today. Heavens goes off and Palace comes in at fullback now. Ferguson became the second Notre Dame man in history to rush for over 1,000 yards this year. 1,192, average 5.6. He's the tailback, 32 in the ball game just now. Now Montana rolls and throws the screen left. Taken on the left side by Vegas Ferguson. Got inside the 20-yard line down near the 16 as Fred Snell made the tackle from the end zone that's number 32 Vegas Ferguson play action he'll set up the screen a little half roll right Lindsay screen back to the weak side at a good block coming out by the guard Vegas Ferguson makes a good cut almost picks up the first down a little short Vegas Ferguson knows all sorts of records at Notre Dame 1,192 yards rushing on the year, Notre Dame record. This is Vegas Ferguson. He's got the first down with yards to spare. He's inside the 10 at the 8. First down and goal to go. Gerald Cook from the corner made the tackle for Houston along with Kenny Hatfield. And Devine along the sideline. Ball is near the 7 yard line. First and goal. Five minutes, 45 seconds left to play in the first quarter. Notre Dame is leading by a score of six to nothing. That 
Palmer in motion across. Montana. Mastak could not hold on. The freshman Dean Mastak. Well, Montana got all the time in the world to throw the football. Finally picked out his tight end. Was right on the numbers with it. Just dropped it. So it'll be second down and goal to go at the seven yard line. Here comes Jerome Heavens back into the ball game. Palace is coming back in. Buchanan is going out. Ferguson is going out. On the second down play, Montana brings him up in an eye and the wing back to the right side is Stetmer. Stetmer in motion across. Quick pitch to Heavens from the tailback. Evans drives to the two-yard line where it'll be third down and goal to go. Notre Dame at the Houston two. Six-yard pickup by Jerome Evans, who runs from both the tailback and the fullback in the Notre Dame eye. This time, Evans is in the eye, pitch around the right side. Pete Palace in front of him blocking. I thought Evans did a nice job, Lindsay, getting down to the two-yard line. He's hit here about the six by number 10, Gerald Cook. Evans now 19 yards and six carries. Buchanan is coming to the ball game. He's a freshman from Plymouth, Indiana, and Palace has gone out. Buchanan, touchdown, Notre Dame. Pete Buchanan, the freshman, 6'3", 220-pounder, drove in for the second Notre Dame touchdown of the day. From the end zone, let's watch Pete Buchanan hit in there with a lot of authority, Lindsay. The freshman, 225 pounds, Known for his blocking around Notre Dame, but this time he goes off the right side, his third touchdown of the year. So we have a conversion attempt coming now for Notre Dame, and since they missed the first one, will they go for two here? Don't here go come. away. I was going to say, Lindsay, don't go away, folks. Bill Yeoman gets his rear offense working. They can put some points on the board so quick, it's unbelievable. Notre Dame's going to try a two-point conversion. And there is a delay penalty. That will cost them five. Did not get it in there ahead of the required time, and so it'll cost them five yards. Puts them definitely in a passing situation now, Lindsay. Uh, Two-point conversion and pass run. The pass run option is very tough defensively, but now with five yards, Montana will definitely go upstairs. Spotted back at the eight-yard line. Notre Dame at the moment is leading 12-0 with the two-point conversion coming. They split Chris Haynes out to a wide left. Montana rolls and looks. Throws incomplete into the end zone. Trying to get it to Houlihan, and so that conversion attempt fails as well, and the score remains. Notre Dame 12, Houston nothing, with four minutes, 40 seconds remaining to be played in the first quarter. Steve Cicci is kicking off for Notre Dame to Eddie Wright and Lonell Fee of Houston. The start of the season, Joe Eunice was doing the kicking for Notre Dame. He was not too effective, and Chuck Mayle took over, was very effective, injured in the Georgia Tech game. It's Wright. He's not going to run it out. Touchback. It'll be put in play first and 10 at the 20-yard line. So now, the Houston Cougars. will be up there running that beer offense. It was originated by Bill Yeoman. Bill Yeoman one-time captain of the Army team. He and Dan Devine were both assistant coaches to Duffy Dougherty in 1954 on the Michigan State staff. Danny Davis, quarterback, Houston to victory here in the Cotton Bowl year before last. He was out most of last year with an injury. Came back this year to quarterback them again to the Southwest Conference Championship. Danny Davis has got the ball. Still got it. Those quick feet that Paul Horning spoke of, and he moved it out to the 32-yard line. Joe Restick brought him down. A little counter option, reverse option. Davis was wide open. The defensive end moved in too quick. You can see it. John Hankard got caught on the inside. A 12-yard pickup by Danny Davis. He runs the veer, Bill Yeoman says, better than anyone he's ever had. They send Eric Herring out to a far right. Love and King of the setbacks. Davis pops it, and out near Herring, incomplete. Second and 10 at the 32-yard line. Dave Wehmer covering out there for Notre Dame. Now he could throw the ball, Lindsay. He threw, completed 76 for 
passes this year for over a thousand yards, 49 percent completion average, nine touchdowns and only seven interceptions. He was also the third leading rusher with 349 yards on the ground. Second down and 10 yards to go. He still got it. Danny Davis picks his way up there to the 40 yard line before Rustic brought him down again about eight yards on the play will make it second and two. From the end zone, I think you're going to see the defensive end, John Hankard, have a good shot at the quarterback, and that's his responsibility. The defensive end must stop the quarterback. He misses him here. Joe Restick on this tackle. Good pickup, third and two for Houston. Notre Dame's leading 12 I think We have three minutes, 40 seconds remaining to be played in the first quarter of the 43rd annual Cotton Bowl game being played on a cold day in Dallas, Texas. Danny Davis with the pitch to the King. King got up to about the 44 yard line as Jay Case came over with Bobby Leopold to make the tackle. A first and ten for the Cougars. Jim Brown are also there defensively. Lindsay, that play might have looked like it was run all the way, but it was not. Perfect example of the Veer offense. First, he faked inside to his back. Now the quarterback has an option to throw the pass or pitch it to his trailing back. Now the cornerback is really the key over there for Notre Dame, the top left of your screen when Houston is running right. If he comes up, Danny Davis throws the football. If he stays back, he pitches it to his back and they're off and running. First down. That's love, Garrett. And he got only a yard. Jay Cates was the first man there. It's going to be second and nine at the 45-yard line. Now, the first defensive move for Notre Dame, when the handoff, you must stop that. The defensive tackle, or the end, just crashes down here and gets love. Davis, if he would have faked it, to love that time and went on the outside. And of course, that's the option the quarterback has. Second down, nine yards to go at the 45. It's the option, and Davis still has it. And he takes a loss of a yard back to the 44, where it'll be third and 10. Jeff Weston and Jay Case win to make the tackle. Garrett Jurgaitis and Hubert Miller are alternated in there at tight end, bringing in the plays from Coach Bill Yeoman. See, this kind of field, Lindsay, is definitely a disadvantage for Houston. They've Average 400 yards offensively a game. And this Veer offense is an east-west offense with Davis sliding up and down the line of scrimmage, pitching to his back. So when you start throwing that football around, those backs have to cut. They're losing their balance. Davis still has it now on the pitch. And it goes out of bounds at the 46-yard line. Steve Heimkreider as the defender. Let's go down to Frank Lieber on the sideline. Now on fourth down, Jay Wyatt is back to do the punting. He has averaged 39 yards per punt. Gets it off. Weimer is deep. Scramble is on down there about the 12, 13 yard line. Notre Dame got mixed nope. up. They did, and hit a Notre Dame man, and Houston recovered. It hit a red jersey. It hit one of the Houston Cougars, and Notre Dame thought it was a live football. They should have just spread out, Lindsay, and got away from it. It's going to be first and 10, Houston. 41 yard punt. Let's check it out. I think it hit one of the Houston Cougars back upfield. First and 10, Houston at the Notre Dame 12 yard line. Big break for Houston to get a touchdown. They're going to keep him off the scoreboard. Notre Dame is leading 12 0, but now the Houston Cougars have excellent field position here. getting it straightened out. Pete Williams, the referee. Dan Devine is over on the sidelines talking to one of the side judges over there. He wants a, an explanation again. 
I tell you, Dan likes to know what's happening out there with the referees. Well, he does. So now another official is coming over to confer with Bill Yeoman as Dan Devine speaks to the officials. So uh, Dan Devine is still pleading his case as we have one minute 31 seconds remaining to be played in the first quarter. Well, the rolling punt hit a Notre Dame man. Chuck Brown recovered the fumble for Houston, and Houston has it first down and 10 yards to go at the 12-yard line. Danny Davis, the quarterback. That's Love carrying, and he gets inside the 10 to the 9-yard line. John Hankard there on the tackle for Notre Dame. Along with Steve Heimkreider. Dan Devine, the head coach of Notre Dame, has been warned, Lindsay, on the sidelines. If he comes on the field once more, it's a 15-yard penalty. Second down, seven yards to go. Now the pitch back to King, and Emmett King downs the ball at the 15-yard line for a loss of six. That's a perfect example right there, Lindsay. On a good field, they're going to execute these offensive plays much better. And it's very tough for a Vera type offense when you have counter action, when you have. That's Shasta Four, the Cougar. That's kept in an air conditioned cage on the campus of the University of Houston. Third down at 13 yards to go. Love has carried five times for 23 yards. Eric Herring goes far to the right side. Danny Davis, full cover, sets it up, throws it into the end zone. Touchdown for Houston. Taken there by Willis Adams. Willis Adams took it for the touchdown. From the end zone, we're going to see Danny Davis. Uh, this wasn't a picture pass, but it was end over end, and Willis Adams was wide open in the end zone. The senior in his fifth touchdown of the year. There's Mr. Adams. He is playing in the East-West game next week, the one that you'll see right here on CBS. Kenny Hatfield is in there to attempt a conversion. Jay Wyatt holds for him, the punter. Wyatt puts it down, Hatfield boots it up, and it's good. So as they come back up the field, it is now Notre Dame 12, Houston 7, and we have 17 seconds remaining to be played in the first quarter. Yes. Well, keep in mind that the NBA will be coming up on CBS. For you basketball fans, on Sunday, January 14th, you'll see the New York Knicks against the Kansas City Kings. And don't miss Marvin Webster, Bob McAdoo for the Knicks, Phil Ford, Otis Bird song for Kansas City. The Chicago Bulls against the Milwaukee Bucks. And then it'll be the Lakers against the Seattle Supersonics, and boy, the Supersonics off to a flying start. Those are regional games, so check your local listings for the game and time in your area. The NBA on CBS. Now, that is Harrison dropped back there with Stone to receive the kickoff as Hatfield. He's getting prepared to tee it up there at the 40-yard line. Notre Dame 12, Houston 7. Still getting it settled on the tee. Sideways. Hatfield is a regular cornerback and handles the kicking duties. He's got it there lying flat on the tee. Sails the line drive down and it's fielded at the 36-yard line. Return only to the 31-yard line. And that was Belden, the fullback who returned it, Tony Belden. First and 10 for Notre Dame at the 31-yard line. Well, Lindsay, we mentioned that the field, the playing condition, would be a definite factor. There's been three turnovers in the game, and all have resulted in scores. 13 seconds remaining in the quarter now as Joe Montana brings the Irish up. Montana has a penalty mark at the line of scrimmage. Long pass to Chris Haynes. Incomplete. Chumchaw was covering on the corner. Uh, Chumchaw comes in there as a backup to Hatfield because after kicking off, Hatfield goes to the sideline to take off the kicking shoe. And Chumchaw plays that corner. But there is a marker, you'll recall, at the line of scrimmage. 
Sides against Houston. That'll cost the Cougars five. Almost offensive pass interference on that last play by Chris Haynes going down the sidelines. They don't look too cold. <laughs> don't look as though they're worried by it in any case. He's cold and he's found a little heat. It's first down and five yards to go now for Notre Dame. Ball is at the Notre Dame 36 yard line. Seven seconds remaining to be played in the quarter. The clock will start on the snap. And the tailback. It was Ferguson carrying, and he was really stacked up by David Hodge and Sam Proctor. Let's take a look at one of the best athletes on the field today, number 70, Leonard Mitchell. Now he had inside responsibility. That was not his fault that the play went outside of him. We'll be back in a minute. Time has run out in the quarter. There's big number 70, Lindsay, six foot six, only a sophomore, 17 or 18 years old. And he plays basketball also. He's a backup center for Houston. Leonard Mitchell, and there's the pitch going to Jerome Evans. And he picks up at most a yard as he gets to the 37, David Hodge, in to make the tackle. I'm Lindsey Nelson with Paul Horning here at the Cotton Bowl game as we start the second quarter. Notre Dame leads by a score of 12 to 7. Irish in possession, third down, four yards to go. They have it at their own 37. Boy, is he big. He's credited with two interceptions, both for touchdowns, a defensive tackle. Buchanan is coming to the Notre Dame backfield now, and Fallis has gone out. Dan Devine's been shuttling him in and out. Heavens has carried seven times for 20 yards unofficially. Chris Haynes to a wide right, Hillahan to a wide left, running backs in an eye third and four for Notre Dame. Notre Dame moved. Now uh, penalty markers are down as Taylor was in to make the tackle on Ferguson. Let's check out the penalty. There's number 90, Jose Taylor, another sophomore. Illegal motion against Notre Dame. They'll decline, Notre Dame will have to punt. They do decline it, fourth down comes up. They lost a three on the play. That's, this is another small gentleman, six foot five, 265 pounds. Heavens gets clothesline, no gain. So now the punter is Joe Rustic. He averaged 38.2, his long was 66. Donnie Love is back there with Linnell Fee to receive the punt. Same thing happened, thing happened, happened before. It was at the 40-yard line. And if it hit a Notre Dame man, would be killed there. Marked by the official at the 40-yard line where Houston will take over as the ball at the moment is resting at the 36. A 30-yard punt has given Houston the ball first and 10 at their own 36-yard line. Notre Dame's leading by a score of 12 to 7. Danny Davis brings the Cougars up. He still has it. Pitches to King. Emmett King across the 40. Penalty marker. Face mask. Bobby Leopold, Jim Brown, and Joe Rustic all there. Beautiful execution of the beer option that time, Lindsay, by Danny Davis. Could it be a face mask? Let's check it out. Referee is Pete Williams with the white cap on there. White cap uh, equipped with ear flaps, appropriately for the afternoon. Danny Davis holding against Notre Dame. Defensive holding against Notre Dame. Picked up about seven on that outside option to the right side. So this is a big one, a 15-yarder in college football. And makes it first and 10, Houston at the Notre Dame 41. Well, Danny Davis has been pretty successful here in the Cotton Bowl, right, Lindsay? He went to elementary school and literally only a stone throw off the backside of the Cotton Bowl. And he's played here eight times, undefeated as a quarterback. This is Love, and he fumbles the ball, and Notre Dame recovers at the 32-yard line. It's a day for turnovers. The cold weather, John Hankard, number 47, on the ball for Notre Dame. 
Well, in a beautiful hole and a good pickup off the right side. They're just controlling the line of scrimmage offensively. Houston, if they can only keep their hands on the football. Randy Love coughs it up, and John Hankard has it for Notre Dame. Paul Harding, you played in Green Bay, Wisconsin. Now, you have days like this. What are the hazards on the extremely cold well, It is not as bad, Lindsay, playing on the natural turf on a day like this because you can get a little bit better footing. But this ice on top of this carpet is very slippery, and it's very cold. And you're right, boy, when your hands get cold, you have a tendency to cough up that football. Look at here. Well, cover with a snap. Penalty mark is everywhere as Montana gathered it in. Well, your hands don't stand much of a chance of getting any warmer during the afternoon. Well, both clubs have some warmers on the sidelines, and you'll see from time to time that the players, uh, when they're on their sidelines, they'll be right near that heater. Look at this snap from center, Lindsay. The exchange just goes right through Montana's hands. He goes up, makes a nice one-handed stab to get the football back. Five-yard penalties marked off against Notre Dame. You see one of the heaters along the sideline. Illegal procedure is the call, which will make it first and 15 and move the ball back to the 27-yard line. Notre Dame is leading by a score of 12 to 7. We have 13 minutes, 45 seconds left in the first half. And where is Vegas Ferguson? Played very sparingly. And pushing the cross. Jerome Evans from the tailback. Cross to the 32. David Hodge in to make the tackle. Picked up five. It'll be second down and 10 yards to go. Penalty marker on the play. Well, it's a good pickup for Heavens off the right side, Lindsay, but going to bring it back. Dave Huffman over there. To listen. So that's a personal foul against Notre Dame. So that will move the Irish back deep into their own territory. Way back. 15 yards. It was first and 15, so we're going to have first and 30. Back to the 22 yard line. But, well, they got a whole lot. <laughs> Dead ball foul. So it is second down now. It's a loss of, loss of down penalty. And 20 to go on 22. On time. Did he well, got it? No, he did not. Incomplete. Incomplete. He did not. It's an incomplete pass. It was batted around for a while. 43 is James Wilson, a defensive end who is Drops back in that pass defense. Here comes the pass. Montana under pressure. Just a little bit behind Dennis Grindinger. Or was that Dean Mastic? Dean Mastic, number 86. And they ruled it incomplete. So it's going to be third down and 20 for Notre Dame at their own 22. Lillahan on the wide left. Chris Haynes on the wide right. Penalty marker. It is incomplete. And there's a marker to be checked out. It was Grindinger for whom it was intended. Tommy Ebner was the defender. He's from Dallas. Well, the receiver's having a little hard time of holding on to Montana's passes. He's been on target three or four times. Houston offside. This time, Notre Dame will get five yards back. Should make it at the 15. Out of that, the 27 with 15 yards to go. Chris Haynes, who led Notre Dame in pass receiving this year with 32 catches, has not caught a pass so far today. Third down and 15 at the 27. He's getting double coverage over there, too, Lindsay. Alice 
on the draw, and Pete Palace gets out to the 33-yard line on the draw play, but that'll bring the punting unit in. Ebner and Hodge made the tackle. Joe Restick is coming in to punt for Notre Dame. Son of the head coach at Harvard. He is a senior. And Lonell Fee drops back right there to receive the punt for Houston. Houston may try to apply pressure on the punt here. Rushing 10 men, at least it looks like it right now. But here they come. Gets it off, but again, not deep, and it hits at the 45 and bounds out of bounds. No run back, and it'll be marked at the 42-yard line, first and 10. So the Cougars get the ball in good field position. Notre Dame is leading 12 to 7, and we have 12 minutes, 29 seconds left to play in the first half, a 25-yard punt. Bill Yeoman is the dean of the Southwest Conference coaches. He's been in Houston 17 years. He was captain of the Army team in 1948 when a student football manager was a man named Frank Gorman. He became an astronaut. First and 10 at the 42-yard line. Love carries, and he struggles out across the 45 to the 46-yard line. Golick and Case made the tackle. This is Bob Golick in the middle. A little reverse spin. He comes around the block, comes back in to help out on the stop. The running backs for Houston now. King, 32 yards on five carries, and Love picked up 39 yards and eight carries. Love again. This time, Golik and Weston are there. It's going to be marked up at the 48-yard line. Picked up a couple of yards on the play. But to leave, uh, I think that's Bob Golik. It's injured. It is. Golik was injured in the Southern Cal game when he had a sprained knee. Here he is in the middle. You see the little equipment tape on his left side. He's hurt his leg, but it's, he came back from the injury very well. He's pushing off of it right here, Lindsay, and I think it just twisted on the left side. Golik's down for Notre Dame. His backup is Pete Johnson. Third down and four yards to go for Houston. They have the ball at their own 48-yard line. Pete Johnson has replaced Golick for Notre Dame. Golick went off under his own power. Danny Davis waiting for the snap for the Houston Cougars. Hobbles it for a moment, picks it up, keeps it himself. Almost gets back to the line of scrimmage. Jeff Weston and Jay Case closed him off. It'll be fourth down now. And the punting unit comes on. Jay Wyatt comes out to do the kicking. Hit by Case, and Weston. Dave Waymer has started to drop back for Notre Dame. That is Waymer there. Jay Wyatt, uh, Harrison is upfield, about 10 yards in front of him in tandem. Well, Wyatt will be kicking with the win. He averaged 39 yards on the season. Waymer at the 12-yard line. Good coverage. Absolutely. At the 13, it is first and 10 for Notre Dame as the Irish will start deep in their own territory. 41-yard punt. Lindsey, we've got a injury report on Bob Golick, the All-American middle linebacker. He injured his knee, but he is expected to return. We invite you to stay with us during the halftime intermission. We'll have the usual pageantry, and I also have an interesting guest on at halftime today in the Cotton Bowl. Tell you more about that later. Ferguson, and he is stacked up at the 15-yard line by Jose Taylor, along with Alton Harvey. Let's go down to Frank Lieber on the sideline. I was behind the Notre Dame bench a moment ago and talked to Joe Montana. He, of course, plays his football in South Bend, grew up in Monongahela, Pennsylvania, says he has never been this cold during a football game in his life. Says the field isn't bad, but he said it's a problem keeping the hands warm. And, of course, the wind is a very big factor, and he can't wait to get it back. It's not too warm for announcers either, Frank. It's second down and eight yards to go at the 15. Find a little hole there. Very important first down coming up for Notre Dame and defensively for Houston, a very big third down situation, Lindsay. If Houston can hold Notre Dame here, Notre Dame will have to be punting against that win. Houston should have excellent field position. Mitchell carried on the last play out to the 18-yard line. 
So it's third down coming up. Nine minutes, 55 seconds left to play in the first half. Montana has it. Maztec with a sliding catch. And he's right at the stick, so they let's check this one out pretty carefully. See about the possible first down. It looked like he picked up the first down. All depends on where he spots the ball. Play action. Going to the right of your screen, he comes back against the grain. Mastic has it, has it, slides down. Now, uh, let's see where they marked it. Very important mark of the football. Looked like he marked it back a little bit. First down. First, down. first and ten for Notre Dame. Oh, that would have been a big one for Houston. They had to punt against that win. Do you remember a play year before last year against Maryland when Danny Davis went back there about his own goal line and completed the pass up the sideline to get him out of there and go on and win the football That's game? That's right. Oh, they were explosive. Put four or five touchdowns on the board in the first quarter. Mastak has caught two for 33. It's first and 10 at the 23-yard line. That's Vegas Ferguson carrying. But he is firmly in the grasp of David Hodge, number 42, the junior from Clute, All-Southwest Conference and All-American linebacker for the Cougars. Loss of a yard on the play. Missed at second and 11 at the 22-yard line. Eight minutes, 58 seconds left in the half. Houlihan comes out to a wide left. Montana. Going long to Chris Haynes, incomplete. So it'll be third down, and 11 yards to go back at the 22. Chris Haynes, during the course of the regular season, caught 32. Had five touchdowns. Gerald Cook was covering on that corner. He's from Palestine. So far, Mr. Haynes has been shut out. You know, it's kind of ironic, Lindsay. The only really two parts of your body that, that you realize is freezing in a day like this are your hands and your feet. And, of course, those are the two most important parts of your body in a game like this. You can speak for yourself. I'm cold all over. <laughs> it's third down and 11 yards to go at the 22. Fumble. 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 Houston got the ball. The Cougars have it near the 20-yard line of Notre Dame. It's David Hodge on the football. Well, this is the second time today that Montana and Dave Huffman have had a problem on the exchange from the center to the quarterback, and it is definitely because of the weather. Watch David Hodge react to the football. The big linebacker, the junior from Flute, has got it, and Houston is in business. They are really in business because Notre Dame is leading by a score of 12 to 7, but Houston has the ball first and 10 just outside the 21-yard line. Eight and a half minutes remaining in the first half. Danny Davis, the quarterback. And this one off to Love. Torn jersey and all. He goes to the 17-yard line. Jeff Weston from Rochester, New York, brought him down. You know, it's interesting. You listen to Notre Dame players and coaches. They said last year when we had to get ready for Texas, we were up. We were playing for the number one position in college football. And he said, really, we only had to stop one player, Earl Campbell. He said, getting ready for Houston, much more difficult with the Bear. They've got more skilled athletes, and they are great. Eddie Davis with the pitch. King has it inside the 10-5, down to the three-yard line, and maybe the two. Pete Johnson finally made the stop. It is marked at the three-yard line. First down and goal to go. One thing about the Vera, Lindsay, it doesn't matter what defense the other team is in. Here's the fake over the middle, reverse option. King has got it. Now watch him turn it on. 14-yard pickup. First down. And they only need about four for the touch. First down and goal to go at the three-yard line. Seven minutes, 41 seconds left in the half. Davis rolling and looking and throwing, and it's incomplete. It was Jurgaitis in the end zone. Joe Rustic covering defensively. Just a little bit easier, and that would have been six. That was a big tight end. 6'5, 230. Fall City, Texas. Second down and goal to go. Houston at the Notre Dame three yard line as Hubert Miller, the sophomore from Fort Worth, brings in the next play. Davis is one for three, 15 yards in the air, but that was the big one. 
the touchdown pass, and here we're getting a Houston timeout. Houston has called for a timeout with seven minutes, 32 seconds remaining to be played in the first half. Notre Dame with a five-point lead, and Houston threatening as second a timeout. This is Lindsey Nelson with Paul Horning at the Cotton Bowl, where Notre Dame is leading Houston by a score of 12 to 7, but Houston has the ball second down and goal to go, and they have it at the Notre Dame three-yard line. We have seven and a half minutes remaining to be played in the first half on a cold day in Dallas, Texas. Randy Davis quarterbacking the Houston Cougars as he has throughout this ball game. He is a senior from right here in Dallas. One time worked in the Cotton Bowl as a peanut salesman when he was a youngster going to elementary school within the shadow of the Cotton Bowl. Davis has got the ball, but Davis cannot advance. It was Jay Case who was hanging on to him, and it's going to be third down and goal still at the three-yard line. So the big third down play comes now for the Houston Cougars. Your guy is bringing in the next play. Number 85 reporting into Davis. Counter option. The first option is really hurt him. Penalty markers down to the line of scrimmage. Davis gets into the end zone. Now there's a penalty marker to be checked out. So what's that all about? Davis took it in all right. Well, they had the counter option pass. Coming back to the weak side, I think it's going to go, to go against Illegal Houston. motion against Houston nullifies what otherwise would have been a touchdown. Well, it's a big break for Notre Dame here, Lindsay. Here it is. Watch the fake inside. Now they come back against the grain. It's an option right here for Davis to either run or throw the football. He decides to take it in. I tell you, he's tricky. Illegal motion will move the ball back to the nine-yard line. Third down and goal to go now, just inside the nine yard line. King in love with the setbacks for that man, Danny Davis. King down to the two yard line. It'll be fourth down coming up, and it's goal to go. Johnson makes a stop on the inside. Listen, third and eight is not necessarily a passing situation for Houston out of the veer. Look at that hole up front. And Pete Johnson right here makes a good stop. I think that was Jim Browner up from his safety position. Timeout out. Houston. And Bill Yeoman there with his quarterback. On Saturday, January 6th, for three and a half hours, the new look CBS Sports Spectacular premieres with the East West Shrine game. Followed by highlights of the fight between Roberto Duran and Monroe Brooks. And then it's a Hollywood stunt competition, plus the NFL Cheerleader Classic. Oh, well, I'm going to watch that one. You and I. That's January 6th for the premiere of the action packed new look CBS Sports Spec. Don't miss it. NFL Cheerleaders Classic. Rumor <laughs> has it that Jimmy the Greek has the Dallas Cowgirls, the six to five favorite in that one. <laughs> or at least with six points. <laughs> we have a fourth down situation coming up here as Bill Yeoman. Talks it over with his quarterback. Bill Yeoman was born in Indiana, attended high school in Glendale, Arizona, was a freshman at Texas A&M, <laughs> then an All-American center at West Point, captain of the 48th team under coach Red Blake. And they are going to go. And the key to it will be Davis. Any man knows the Bear offense is Bill Yeoman. He invented it. Love, touchdown! Love took it in for the touchdown. The quickness of Randy Love. He scored nine touchdowns on the year. Just straight ahead, Lindsey. From the end zone, just a handoff. Right over his right tackle, he veers to the outside. His momentum gets him into the end zone. Houston takes the lead. The Cougars are leading it now 13 to 12, and they have a conversion attempt coming, and they have Kenny Hatfield in that about it. Randy Love, who took it in. Senior from Garland. The punter, Jay Wyatt, holds. Hatfield boots, and it's good. And so now the score is 
the Houston Cougars 14 and Notre Dame 12 with six minutes 27 seconds remaining to be played in the first half. We were saying that we had an interesting guest coming up at halftime and it's going to be Dickie Magel who had an outstanding game here in the Cotton Bowl 25 years ago today as Rice defeated Alabama and Magel figured in a very bizarre play and we'll be talking with him about that at halftime. Of course, we have lots of big events coming up on CBS, and one of them is the NFC Championship next Sunday, January 7th, 4.30 p.m. Eastern Time. Oh, it's going to be a great one. The Dallas Cowboys and the Los Angeles Rams. Pat That's Summerall and Brookie will be there. So tune it in on January 7th on CBS, the NFC Championship. Word around Dallas is Roger Stallback will be back at the controls. At field, we'll kick off here now. Stone is back there deep, along with Randy Harrison to receive it for Notre Dame. Rams didn't look too shabby yesterday on CBS, did they? they did. Harrison's waiting. He's got a two yards deep in the end zone. Goal line five and out to the 10. Harrison to the 15, stacked up at the 16-yard line and struggled to the 17, where they'll start first and 10. It was Chumchall downfield to make the tackle. Back up cornerback. We were saying early in the ball game after Notre Dame had taken an early lead that the Vera attack of Houston can strike quickly and at any time and it is struck for 14 points to put them out front. Vegas Ferguson. Flags down on the sideline. There is a penalty marker to be checked out. I tell you, with six minutes to go, Notre Dame against this win. The defensive thinking here for Houston is they're on offense right now, Lindsay. They've got to stop from making a first down, and Houston will be back in business with good field position, and this really hurts. Holy against the Irish. Notre Dame had the win in the first quarter, put two touchdowns on the board, then two turnovers. Uh, Notre Dame has given Houston the lead. It's going to move the ball back to about the seven and a half yard line. First down and about 20 yards to go. Dennis Ferguson. He got it out to the 15 yard line. Robert Oglesby from Fort Worth made the tackle. Ferguson stays well, he will eclipse Jerome Heaven's career rushing mark at Notre Dame. We'll need about 600 yards next year, and he should accomplish that easy. Went over the 200 yard mark twice during the season. Second down and 13 yards to go at the 15. Montana back to throw. There's a screen right to Heaven's, and he slips out of bounds at about the nine yard line. Jerome Heavens broke the career rushing record at Notre Dame that had been held for so many years by George Gipp, prompting the wags around South Bend to say that Notre Dame no longer won one for the Gipper, they won one for heaven's sake. It is third down coming up. Five and a half minutes remaining to be played in the first half. Third and long. Hangins in the wide right, Hulahan left, Montana rolling. Goes to Hulahan, and it is intercepted. Picked up by Kenny Hatfield. Hatfield is returning, and he's across the 40, 35 to 30. Kenny Hatfield goes out of bounds at the 25 yard line. First and 10, Houston at the Notre Dame 25 on Kenny Hatfield's interception. There's Montana. He's trying to come up with the play, Lindsay, to get him out of that territory, a big first down, but what a defensive interception by Kenny Hatfield. Good hands, and Hatfield keeps his balance and a good return, a 25-yard return. He's out of bounds. 
Hatfield is also the placement kicker, in addition to being a cornerback. First down, 10 yards to go. Danny Davis brings them up. That is Love carrying. Randy Love. Opted to the 17 before Mike Calhoun and Bobby Leopold brought him down. Gain of eight yards on the play, second and two. Well, if Houston offensive line will keep the pressure on with these two backs, Love and King. Joe Restick is down. It's an injury timeout. Halftime score, Alabama over Penn State by seven. Oh, the same, Lindsay. Uh, the offensive line for Houston is really coming off the football. And these backs, both Emmett King and Randy Love, they hit in there so quick. Your defensive tackle, they must stop first the handoff to the backs. And that has been Houston's best play so far. Love has 54 yards on 11 carries, and King 55 yards on eight carries. Very balanced rushing. Joe Rustic is leaving the field. He has been replaced by Randy Harrison at the free safety spot for Notre Dame. Rustic is also the punter. Second down, about two and a half yards to go. Houston at the Notre Dame 17 yard line, and Houston is leading by a score of 14 to 12. This is King. First and 10. At the 10, Tom Gibbons made the tackle for Notre Dame. <laughs> All during the first half, look at the wide splits for that Houston Veer, and look at the hole, Lindsey. Even though he almost gets tackled by Calhoun, the splits of the offensive line of Houston, the blocking up front, there's huge gaping holes for those two backs to run into, especially from tackle to tackle. They've got Adams in a wide left, your guy to send the slot. Love got the football. And he lost a yard. Closed it. Second and 11 at the 11-yard line. John Hankard. And to make the tackle along with Jeff Weston. Hubert Miller brings in the next play. John Newhouse comes in now at a running back also for Houston. They very possibly could get a first down, but they got to move the football to about the six-inch line to get a first down. It's possible, but not likely. Davis has the ball. Davis throw inside the five yard line of the four. Jay Case, they're on the tackle. Now this is an excellent decision on the part of Danny Davis here. It looks like he's not going to gain maybe one or two yards, but he just waits and picks his spot. He goes inside and on that field he slides an extra three or four yards. He got it inside the five, it's resting at the four yard line. Third down coming, third and four at the four. Houston leading 14 to 12 and driving with three minutes, 15 seconds left to play in the half. Davis, Davis still alive. Throws it up into the end zone and throws it away. It's incomplete. Fourth and four at the four yard line. Wise decision. Hatfield's coming in, he's the field goal man. He threw it away on purpose, Lindsay. It wasn't anybody in the vicinity of that pass, Danny Davis didn't want to be sacked for that 10 or 12 yard loss. In field goals this year, Hatfield was two for four. Well, they scored so many touchdowns, it didn't matter. 44 touchdowns in 11 game season. This will be a 21 yard attempt with Wyatt holding for Hatfield from the hash mark right. The 21 yarder is good. And the score is Houston 17. Notre Dame 12. And we have exactly three minutes remaining to be played in the first half of the 43rd annual Cotton Bowl game here in Dallas, Texas. Injury report on Joe Restick, the fine safety, free safety for Notre Dame, has a contusion on his back and possibly he could return. Notre Dame is deploying to receive the kickoff. That is Harrison dropping back there with Stone. 
to receive the kickoff, and Hatfield has teed it up. Well, Lindsay, you watch Notre Dame all year long. It seems to me that Joe Montana usually responds passing the football when he's in trouble, when he has to throw the football. And I think they're going to be in trouble in the second half, and he's going to have to come on and throw the football. And they're going to have to catch it. They've dropped three or four in the first half. I would think that they consider themselves to be in some trouble right now. With Houston out front 17-12. Hatfield kicks it up. It's over to Harrison's side of the field, and he's got it at the 9. To the 10, to the 15, to the 20, Harrison to the 21-yard line. It'll be first and 10 at the 21. Newhouse was downfield to make the tackle for Houston. Houston's first year of eligibility for the Cotton Bowl was 1976. And that's when they came in here and defeated Maryland, and Bill Yeoman was runner-up that year for National Coach of the Year honors. What a job he's done at Houston. Willahan in motion across. Give it to the fullback. Evans has moved it out across the 30, 35, and onto the 37 yard line for a first and 10. Chumka, Chumchal made the tackle. Good blocking off the left side. Jerome Evans, there's Vegas Ferguson. The eye back, he hands it off to Evans. He slides to his left. He's going to pick up 17 yards here and the first down. Wind has blown the ball around, and the officials give chase to get it back and re spot it. Evans has carried 11 times for 39 yards for Notre Dame today. First and 10, short at the 37-yard line. Montana. In there, cannot hold on, it's incomplete. Now Notre Dame's tight ends having trouble this afternoon holding on to the football. I think that's about the fifth time a tight end has dropped the football. It would have been a good catch, Lindsay. But as I said, the cold, that's the first thing that people worry about in a game like this is their hands. It will be second down coming now with 10 yards to go at the 37. Houston's leading by score 17 to 12. Montana. And it's complete up the middle. And Evans takes it across the 45 yard line to the 46. David Hodge made the tackle. A little short of the first down. The third down and a yard to go. Notre Dame at the Notre Dame 46. Darrell Wilkinson coming in defensively. A little light snow is falling here at the Cotton Bowl. Montana, 6 for 14, 71 yards. Let's pop this one up the middle, and it is Jose Taylor on the tackle. That's Pete Buchanan, Buchanan the Garrett. Now they're going to check out the possible first down. Buchanan, the freshman fullback, Garrett. And they're going to bring out the chain and measure. And we have time out for the measurement. It's a little short. Chain gang comes out. One minute, 38 seconds left to play in the first half. Likes that much. It's short. So it's fourth down. And the ball is at the 46 yard line. Fourth and about a yard to go. We're going to go for it. Quarterback sneak would get it easy. Montana likes to run that. He runs the sneak. Penalty marker. He got the first down, but there may be a five-yard penalty involved. Montana on the team, and flats are down on the play. Well, defensive, if you don't put a man head up that center, you're using two defensive tackles off the guards. All he has to do is go far. You pick up, you could pick up a foot or two foot. There's the movement up front. That was Robert Oglesby, who usually plays in the nose guard position. He's in the gap, he's offsides. Cost him five yards. Makes it first down for Notre Dame at the Houston 49-yard line. One minute, 19 seconds left in the half as Chris Haynes comes in the ballgame. Evans is going off. 
There goes Maztac off the field. Now he comes back into the huddle, and there goes Grendinger off. Chris Haynes wide to the left side. Montana. Intercepted at the 45 yard line and returned by Bradham. Steve Bradham intercepted it. Flags down. Bradham's been all over the field here in the first half, probably holding against Notre Dame. That would seem to be the indication that it is. Holding against Notre Dame declined because Houston wants the ball and the Cougars get it. First and ten, they get it at their own 44 on the interception by Bradham. That was a poor pass end over end by Joe Montana. And of course, the weather has really affected his throwing. They thought they'd be able to exploit uh, Houston secondary, Lindsay. They were rated uh, the last in the conference pass on pass defense. But so far, Montana's had problems. Of course, they explained that record on pass defense by saying that their defense closed off the running attack of the opposition, and if they gained, they had to gain in the air. They try the draw here to Love. Randy Love across the 50. And he is at the 45-yard line of Notre Dame. Tom Gibbons upset him there. Great move here. Just a little draw. Randy Love just picks up the first down on his own. He breaks a tackle here. Going forward, he got the extra yard first down. Inside the 46-yard line of Notre Dame. Clock is running and we have 50 seconds remaining to be played. Keep in mind that during the halftime intermission, you'll see the Notre Dame band and the Houston band, and the Kilgore Rangerettes, among other things. There's an incompletion. Danny Davis popping it on the ground out there. John Hankard pressuring him. It's going to be second and 10 at the 46 yard line. Danny Davis is Andy Davis said that he used to sell peanuts, popcorn, and whatnot in the stands as a youngster. His appearance record after he started playing football in this stadium was 8 0. King, and he gets inside the 40 yard line, Jay Case. Well, that's the play that's given Notre Dame's defense the most problems. And I think just a straight ahead handoff. There's a timeout, Houston. Houston stops the clock. You see in set, 33 seconds remaining to be played in the first half. And Houston is leading by a score of 17 to 12 as Danny Davis comes over for a talk with Bill Yeoman. Davis passing today is one out of five for 15 yards, but that was the big pass completion, 15 yards for the touchdown. King has carried 10 times for 72 yards. Love has carried 13 times for 59 yards for Houston. Cougars Great running backs. The first time in Southwest Conference history the two backs on the same team went over 1,000 yards. For many years in the geographical part of the country, the Houston Cougars were sort of orphans. They were in several conferences. They were independents, struggling all the while to be admitted to the Southwest Conference. Finally were admitted and were eligible for the first time in 1976 and now in their first three years of eligibility they have played in the Cotton Bowl twice which is not all that bad third down and two yards to go with the ball on the 37 yard line Davis has got it got the first down that'll Pete stop the clock that'll stop the clock till they get the chains in set first down 10 yards to go they are up there and ready to go at the 33 yard line Clock is running with 20 seconds left in the half. Well, he throws that in a way to stop the clock. And it stops it with 16 seconds remaining in the half, and it'll be second down and 10 yards to go. Houston at the Notre Dame 33-yard line. Andy Davis looking over to the sideline, and here comes Hubert Miller in with the play for him. He's in the messenger tight end. Willis Adams is out into a wide left. Eric Herring's in the wide right. Herring at the 21 yard line. Pull him out of bounds at the 17. Stops the clock with nine seconds remaining. Dave Weimer on the tackle along with Browner. 
It'll bring the field goal unit on. 17 yard pickup. And Davis, the good release that time, Lindsay, right on target on the sideline, picked up 16 yards and definitely has them uh, for Kenny Hatfield field goal attempt. 34 yard attempt. Wyatt puts it down. Hatfield's kick is up and the 34 yarder is good. It skimmed the board. It just board. got over. It just got over, but it made it. Three seconds on the clock. A 34 yard field goal is good. And Houston leads now by a score of 20 to 12. So the Houston Cougars get three more on the scoreboard before the halftime intermission. Getting that one off with three seconds remaining to be played in the first half. Well, in the first quarter was Notre Dame. They had to win the second quarter. Houston had just swapped Notre Dame both offensively and defensively. I would imagine that Dan Devine, well, he's got a right to really chew out this football team at halftime, Lindsay. They look a little lackadaisical, and they do not look good at all. Dan Devine. On the sideline there, he was born in Wisconsin, went to high school in Proctor, Minnesota, to college at the University of Minnesota, Duluth, got his master's degree while an assistant coach at Michigan State. He was head coach at Arizona State at Missouri, head coach of the Green Bay Packers. This is his fourth year at Notre Dame, Dan Devine. Hatfield will kick it off. Stone and Harrison along the 15-yard line. Since he's got it placed squarely flat down on the tee again to kick a line drive, and it's taken at the 29-yard line. And it is returned across the 40-yard line. Pete Buchanan. Buchanan returning, and time run, runs out as he returns it to the 46-yard line. Time has run out in the half, and Houston is leading at the halftime intermission by a score of 20 to 12 over Notre Dame. A victory for Houston over Notre Dame would be of considerable importance to them for years. Houston struggled as an independent trying to get named teams on their schedule. And a victory over Notre Dame would be a considerable feather in their cap. Let's go down now to Frank Lieber. Bill Yeoman is here with me and you guys are playing like at 75 degrees. Well, no, it's not 75 degrees. The kids have played, come back after those first two mistakes there early and have played pretty well. I'll tell you what, though, that gum Notre Dame now, they've dropped some pass and things like that. I'll tell you, they're playing real tough. We better be ready for a full foot, full football game. But you haven't lost your cool at all after that 12 oh, points against how you. How can you lose your cool on a day like this, for crying out loud? No, there's no sense in getting stirred up. Heck, you're going to play as well as you can play, and if it doesn't work out, that's the way it goes. The wind, obviously, is a big factor, though. You did score wind once is, against it. Yeah, wind's getting to be a little bit of a problem. And I got a sneaking suspicion it may cool off here and really get bad. Montana, a little trouble throwing the ball. You're defensing them that well. Is the wind against him in that second Well, period? no, I'll tell you, I think Joe's throwing the ball pretty doggone well. We got in the one and maybe two, but uh, he's throwing the ball pretty well. I think our linebackers are playing better. I think our secondary is playing better. I'll tell you, we lost our concentration late in the year in our linebacker and defensive end, and they're playing better right now. You surprised you're running the ball as well as you are? Oh, no. No, we we run it all year, and, and we feel if we can execute, we can run the ball and down anybody. But you know, like, they may now they may step it in our ear this next one. <laughs> well, it was cold here a couple of years ago, but not quite like this, huh? No, you're right. You're right. It's good and fresh. Okay, thank you very much. Real good okay. luck to you in the second half. Bill Yeoman, the head coach of the Houston Cougars, here at halftime, where the Cougars lead Notre Dame by a score of 20 to 12. Back with halftime activities in just a moment. The score is Houston 20, Notre Dame 12. So let's take a look at some of the highlights of first half action. First quarter action with Houston with the football. Emmett King fumbles the football and defensive end Jay Case, number 75, has it for Notre Dame. Then on the third and six, Montana back to pass. He hits his big tight end, Dean Mastic. First down inside the five yard line. Montana, roll out right, puts Notre Dame on the board for the first touchdown, the extra point. The snap from center was mishandled. Notre Dame leads six to nothing. Then on the ensuing kickoff, there's a fumble by the backup quarterback, and Notre Dame has the football. Moments later, Pete Buchanan, the freshman, rolls over from the one yard line, extra point. They went for two, no good, 12 to nothing. Houston countered with a 15 yard touchdown pass by Danny Davis. Then. Montana later on fumbles. David Hodge, the linebacker for Houston, gets it back, and Danny Davis goes to work. He hands off inside, big hole. 
Emmett King, and then Randy Love goes off the right side. Houston goes in front. Kenny Hatfield kicks both extra point. Houston leads 14 to 12. Montana moments later tries for the home run. Kenny Hatfield, an excellent interception. He returned 25 yards. He followed with the 25-yard field goal. Then just before the half, he added another field goal, and that's how it stands, 20 to 12 at halftime. First down, Houston. Lindsay, you can see they have com completely controlled the football. 12 first downs to Notre Dame, six. 155 yards rushing, Lindsay, and there is the key to the ball game right there. Houston's veer has been able. Uh, they haven't really looked as good offensively as they've looked on certain occasions this year, but they are doing the job. 155 yards rushing, Notre Dame only 79. And the big key for Notre Dame, only 71 yards in the air throwing the football. Montana's had three or four Maybe five passes dropped here in the first half. So at halftime, it is Houston leading Notre Dame by a score of 20 to 12. And uh, it's a cold day here in Houston, Texas. And uh, how much effect that had on the ball game, Paul? Well, I'll tell you one thing, Lindsay. We watched a beautiful halftime show here at the Cotton Bowl, and I only hope that the football players can hold on to the football and uh, not too many fumbles as the, these little girls down here in shorts with the baton twirls, they didn't drop too many. I think they're really the stars of the show so far. I saw that one baton twirler throw that thing up 50 feet in the air. It hurt me even to see it just start down on a cold day. Didn't seem to bother the Rangerettes at all. They got along just fine. They sure did. But Notre Dame at halftime, I would imagine Dan Devine is a little bit hot. They haven't played too well. They got off, uh, what, two touchdowns in front, 12 to nothing, and then Houston stormed back. And I want to tell you something about this team. They've been, what, kind of like semi-outlaws down here in the Southwest, just admitted to the Southwest Conference a couple of years ago. And this team, is really, with the defeat of Notre Dame today, if they can hold on and win, I think Bill Yeomans figures his program is over the top. They have to be reckoned with as a national power. Well, you wonder about teams whether they can play catch-up football or not. Notre Dame proved that they can play catch-up football because in their final game of the season against Southern Cal, they had to play catch-up, and they did. They're going to have to, and of course, the big key is in the third quarter, depending on who has the win, Lindsay. It seems as if the team with the football, with the wind at their back, is going to put some points on the board. Notre Dame with Montana throwing must have that win. I think we still have a lot of excitement coming. We've got another half of football. You know, talking as we were to Dickie Magel at halftime, reminded me that 25 years ago today, I was in the telecast booth at Red Grange during the ball game. Dickie Magel was on the field, and the producer for CBS here today, Perry Smith, was in the truck producing 25 well, years ago. Listen, you two people, you Perry Smith <laughs> and Lindsey Nelson, this is Lindsey's 19th Cotton Bowl, and truly, if there was ever a voice of any bowl game, the voice of the Cotton Bowl belongs to you, Lindsey. I congratulate you on that. We're staying here for 19 years. <laughs> Well, I tell you, we've seen a lot of exciting moments. We were reminiscing, as you know, you and I and Wilbur Evans before today's ball game. Wilbur retired last year as the executive director after having been with the Southwest Conference and the Cotton Bowl for 17 years. We were talking about the great events that have transpired. Over the years, they've had most all the great football players and some great games in this series. They sure have. And uh, as Wilbur Evans was mentioning, the coldest day ever in the Cotton Bowl was what, back in 47? But I'll tell you one thing, Lizzie, I don't think it can get too much colder than this right here. No, they had an ice storm move in night before last. It was the, the most severe ice storm in 30 years in this area. And of course, this is artificial turf. It wasn't covered. It wouldn't have helped if it had been, as a matter of fact. And then it turned up very cold today with a wind chill factor down there around sub-zero. They've had heaters along the sidelines. You see them there trying to stay as warm as they can. And Houston has got back onto the field. Notre Dame has not yet put in an appearance, and we expect them at any moment. The Irish should be back. Notre Dame appeared here in 1970. It was the first time the Irish had been to a bowl game in 45 years. They had appeared in the 1925 Rose Bowl and had not played on a postseason game until the 1970 Cotton Bowl game. And the Cotton Bowl officials here say that that was a game that really moved the Cotton Bowl up in overall national acceptance and prestige because it was a great football game, the 1970 game, in which Texas won, and the 1971 game, in which Notre Dame won. Well, it looks as if we're going to be in for a very high-scoring football game, and if Notre Dame can get a touchdown on the board, Lindsay, this may well prove to be one of the most interesting of all Cotton Bowl games because we already have 32 points on the board. And with this Vera offense of Houston, as effective as it has been inside against Notre Dame's defense, I think we're going to see three or four more touchdowns on the board in the second half. 
Well, the Fighting Irish are back now along the far sideline as the visiting team here. It is their fourth appearance. Notre Dame has appeared in this bowl more than they've appeared in any other bowl anywhere. Leading some of the people here in Dallas to say this week that the Cotton Bowl was the first bowl, of course, to have the Southwest Conference champion, a conference champion as the permanent host. They said they also have a permanent visiting team. It's Notre Dame. <laughs> so far, in fact, Notre Dame has won each of the nation's five biggest bowl games, 25 Rose Bowl, 71 and 78 Cotton, 74 Sugar, and the 75 Orange Bowl. And Houston making its second appearance, going for two for two, not all, only with Bill Yeomans as head coach, but Danny Davis, the quarterback, who had an outstanding day against Maryland here two years ago. Alabama has won in all the bowl games that Notre Dame has except the Gator Bowl. Alabama has never won in the Gator Bowl. They appeared there once and lost to Missouri. So now we are getting it set for the second half with Houston, leading Notre Dame by a score of 20 to 12. Notre Dame must shut down Houston's inside running game. Emmett King has 72 yards, Lindsay, and 10 carries. Randy Love, 59 yards and 13 carries. And they have done the biggest damage. So now each team goes into its final huddle preparatory to the start of the second half and for Notre Dame they will receive as Weimer is dropping back there along with Stone. And Hatfield is teeing it up, Kenny Hatfield will kick it off for Coach Bill Yeomans, Houston Cougars. Houston is leading by a score of 20 to 12. This is Lindsey Nelson with Paul Horning at the Cotton Bowl in Dallas. The lights have been on since before the opening kickoff. Weimer retreats. He will not run it out. Touchback. First and 10 at the 20 yard line as Notre Dame takes over in Notre Dame territory. And Joe Montana, the senior from Monongahela, Pennsylvania, comes out to run the attack for the Irish. He's got Vegas Ferguson in there, along with Jerome Heavens at the running backs as we start the second half. Tim Cagle. Tim Cagle just came into that huddle. Tim Cagle is the quarterback. It's not Montana. It is the sophomore from Cincinnati, Ohio, Tim Cagle, who is starting at quarterback for Notre Dame here in the second half. That's a surprise. Gave it to Evans and he was stacked up. Loss of a yard back to the 19 yard line, which will make it second down and 11 yards to go. Uh, Tim Cagle was one of the most sought after high school football players in the nature, nation out of Cincinnati. Didn't see too much action this year. Four out of eight is his stats throwing the football. We're going to try to get a report on Montana. I don't think he was hurt. There was no apparent injury to Montana, but it is a great surprise that Tim Cagle has come out here as the starting quarterback in the second half. Cagle with the pitch now to Vegas Ferguson. And Ferguson pulled down by the Cougar defense. It's a dogged defense, and it's at the 20 yard line. Evansberger, Grady Evansberger, the senior from Van Alstein, made the tackle. Third down and 10 yards to go at the 20 yard line. Leonard Mitchell coming in defensively for Houston. Hillahan comes out to a wide left. Chris Haynes in a wide right for quarterback Tim Cagle. It's a tough position, number one. Let's see. Overthrows Haynes incomplete. That'll bring on the punting unit for Notre Dame. Well, we've got a report. Dan Devine, he, Montana is not hurt. He's he just decided to go with Timmy Cagle. It is surprising in that throughout his career, Joe Montana has been the come from behind quarterback for Notre Dame. He was the man who sparkled in the come from behind effort at Southern Cal. Bushka is in there to flanker. I beg your pardon, that's his punter. Bushka is in there to do the punting. You'll recall it, Restick was injured. So Bushka partially has it partially blocked. blocked. 
Up to the 33-yard line, there will be no run back, and it's rolling now across the 40, and out of bounds at the 41-yard line. Houston with the ball in Notre Dame territory. Bushka the punter, as Joe Restick was injured in the first half. Well, has the benefit of about a 20 to 25 mile an hour wind at Houston's back, going left to right on your screen. And you're thinking in the third quarter, Lindsay, they know they'll have to be facing the passing attack in the fourth quarter, so put a couple touchdowns on the board because Notre Dame has not been able to move, especially against the wind. Danny Davis brings him up with Randy Levin, Emmett King at the running backs for Houston. This is Emmett King, and he gets it inside the 40 and near the 37-yard line. Again, of about four, Steve Heimkreider made the tackle. It'll be second down and six yards to go. We are in the third quarter here at the Cotton Bowl. The sun is trying to break through the overcast overhead. Davis keeps the ball. Gets it to the 35-yard line. Pete Johnson, middle linebacker, made the tackle. Golick was injured, you'll recall, in the first half. It is third down and four yards to go at the 35. Thirteen minutes, thirteen seconds left to play here in the third quarter. Willis Adams out to a wide left and Eric Herring to a wide right. Gerritus is the tight end to the left side. Love. And he got very little. Steve Heimkreider was there. Jeff Weston made the tackle. Warm-up action along the Notre Dame sideline. That's Tim Cagle trying to straighten warm with that warm-up jacket on, loosening up his right arm. Jay Wyatt comes in to do the punting now. Gibbons has dropped back along with Weimer, standing along the 10-yard line for Notre Dame. Tom Gibbons. And short, and there he comes. Wyatt off the side of his foot, aiming it down the sideline, and he gets a good roll, and it goes out of bounds at the seven-yard line. So Wyatt rolled it out at the Notre Dame seven, where the Irish will start first and 10. With Houston leading by a score of 20 to 10, you're at the 43rd annual Cotton Bowl in Dallas, Texas. We're behind the Notre Dame bench. Joe Montana did not come out for the second half. The team physician has just told me he has the chills. His body temperature is below normal. They're giving him uh, warm fluids, and he may be back before the end of the game. He said it's kind of like the start of the flu. So that's the story on Joe Montana, Lindsay. All right, Frank, that's the explanation of why Tim Cagle is quarterbacking the Irish. They held the ball first and 10 at their own seven-yard line. Motion across, that's Hulahan. Vegas Ferguson. But David Hodge, the great linebacker for Houston is there to close him off. Houston's defense is just eating Notre Dame alive up front. They're just shutting down all the running attack and then forces Notre Dame into third long or second long. And this is a very tough position for Timmy Cagle. First of all, he's throwing against a 25-mile-an-hour win. Hasn't seen too much action. Second and nine at the eight-yard line. Ferguson's carried nine times for 17 yards. And again, the Houston defense is right there. Evans. Evans carried and Hodge again made the tackle. They must be hoping, Lindsay, that they can just play Houston to a standstill in the third quarter and just wait for the win. But uh, that's a bad philosophy. <laughs> third down and eight yards to go at the nine yard line. They're gonna have to throw more on first and second down, Lindsay. They're running the ball, they get three or four yards, they're forced into third and long. The running back split on third down. Evans Garrett. Got about a foot or so, and the punting unit's coming on for Notre Dame. It was Alton Harvey there on the tackle. He's from Grapeland, Texas. So Bushka again comes in to do the kicking. Dick Bushka. Bushka. <laughs> 
Bunnell Fee has dropped back to field it for Houston. Kicking into the wind, Fee takes it at the Notre Dame 40 and gets to the Notre Dame 38-yard line where the Cougars will start first and 10. Jay Case made the tackle. So the Cougars get it again. That was a 32-yard punt by Dick Bushka. Houston is leading 20-12. First down and 10 yards to go now for Houston. They have the ball at the Notre Dame 38-yard line. We have 10 minutes, 15 seconds left to play in the third quarter, and Houston's leading by a score of 20 to 12. This is artificial turf here at the Cotton Bowl, and this time next year, they will have new artificial turf and a new press box installed here at the Cotton Bowl. Adams is far to the left side. Davis with a pitch. King is coming back. Drops the ball. King simply takes it on a dribble and is down at the 48-yard line for a loss of 10. As Dave Wimbo made the stop, it'll be second and 20 back at the 48. Just keep it bouncing in front of you and you're all right. Very lucky bounce that time. Came right back up into his hands. This Cotton Bowl game was a sellout, but as you see when our camera swings by the stands, a great many people, thousands of them, elected to stay in the warmth of their living rooms and watch the Cotton Bowl game on television rather than come out and watch this game in conditions that have been less than ideal. That's Love carrying, and he gets to the 45-yard line before Jay Case makes the tackle. In a three to make it third and 17. At game time, the wind chill factor was sub zero. Temperature was around 17 degrees Fahrenheit. But there was about a 25 mile an hour wind blowing also. And as Bill Yeoman pointed out, it uh, hasn't gotten any warmer during the course of the afternoon. Completed pass. 25 yard line taken there by Willis Adams and it's a first and 10 at the 25 Randy Harrison made the tackle Adams who caught a first half touchdown pass from Danny Davis Davis back his third completion of the afternoon he really guns it 20 yard pickup right over the middle he's wide open in the Notre Dame zone Randy Harrison on the stop so the Houston Cougars are leading 20 to 12 there's Willis Adams 6'2", 189 pounder, fine pass receiver. Average per catch is over 18 yards. Davis has it, and he pumps it complete to Eric Herring. Herring's first catch of the day. Jay Case made the tackle. It's just outside the 15 yard line. The tackle made by Case. It'll be second down at about a yard to go, spotted inside the 16. The Houston Cougars leading and driving. They send Adams to the left side, Herring to the right side, Love's in the right set, King's in the left set for Danny Davis. That's King. Emmett King drives to the 13. It's a first and 10. Jay Case made the tackle for Notre Dame. Along with Steve Heimkreider. Completely in control. Now here comes Hubert Miller in with the next play. Davis starting to mix it up a little bit more, Lindsay, here in the second half, throwing the football a couple of times, completing both these attempts. Emmett King. Emmett King popped as he got across the 15 by Joe Gramke. One thing DeVere does now, Danny Davis, as he handed off to Emmett King, you saw the Notre Dame defense collapse. And he might be just licking his chops because of that, Lindsay. Next time, he's just going to fake it to King, and they're going to get outside with some running room. Second and 10 at the 13-yard line. And they send Adams to the left side and Herring right. Now, Davis keeps. Davis is at the five, and he is out of bounds at the two-yard line. Great balance. Jim Browner bounced him out. There's a missed tackle back here, but it's the quick feet of Danny Davis. Here he is, fakes it inside. You see they tackled the handoff man. Now Davis does the rest on his own. He broke a tackle from Heimkreider and Randy Harrison. 
Got it inside the three. First down and goal to go at the two yard line now. For the Houston Cougars, six minutes, 44 seconds left in the third quarter. Herring's going wide to the left side. Davis, touchdown. Danny Davis, touchdown himself. Well, they got... They've got Notre Dame's defense just guessing now. You really better not guess against Severe, you're going to really get hurt. This time he fakes it and ducks back inside the handoff spot easily for the score. So it's now 26 12. Danny Davis there, the quarterback, and a good one. Conversion attempt is coming, and Hatfield is coming in to do the booting. Jay Wyatt will hold for him. Conversion attempt is good. Come back up the field to score is Houston 27, Notre Dame 12, six minutes, 29 seconds left to play in the third quarter. <laughs> well, the cold is not bothering that particular section. Call me Ray. That's the gentleman I think that performs in all the Dallas Cowboy game. And the ball is teed up at the 40-yard line for Hatfield to kick it off. He's got Stone back there with Weimer to receive it for Notre Dame. Spiraled over to Weimer's side of the field. He's got it at the goal line five. Weimer to the 10, turns it on to the 15, changes pace to the 20, and is stopped at the 22. So Notre Dame will get it first and 10 at the 22-yard line. It was Barrett downfield for Houston to make the tackle. And Tim Cagle is coming out to run the attack. Joe Montana apparently has fallen victim to the elements in the first half. Reported during the halftime in a mission by the team position that he has chills, slight temperature, and so Montana has not come out. And Tim Cagle is running the attack first and 10 at the 22 for Notre Dame. Houston defense once again. You've got to start throwing the football, Lindsay, on first and second down. This will not work. In there to get to Vegas Ferguson, who's getting up a little slowly. And if you don't think field position has helped Houston, they went 12 yards for a touchdown, 21 yards for a touchdown, 38 yards for a touchdown. They started, uh, they went 21 yards for a field goal and 39 yards for a field goal. So they started with field position inside the 40 every time they put points on the board. Illegal motion against Notre Dame, decline, second and 13 at the 19-yard line. Tim Cagle. Incomplete. So it'll be third and 13 at the 19-yard line. And completion stops the clock with 6-11 remaining in the third quarter. That's Joe Montana now. Joe Montana warming up along the sidelines. Kago. Going long. The last stack and it is incomplete. He threw it right into the coverage, exactly what Houston wanted him to do. He was not only double covered, Lindsay, there were four red jerseys around Mastin. Montana continues to throw. Fourth down has come up, and the punter has come on now. Bushka standing at his own five-yard line. Dick Bushka. Von Fee is dropped back to field it for Houston. Ten men on the line of scrimmage for the Houston Cougars. Oh, and they block it again. They block it. Houston has the ball. And it's near the 20 yard line inside the 20. Great rush by the Houston Cougars here. They had 10 men rushing the kicker. They know he's kicking against the wind. Buska gets it blocked. Number 34 of Houston. Mr. Harrison, one of the linebackers. So once again, Houston starts 
Just with great field position inside Notre Dame's 20. Bobby Harrison blocked it. First and 10 for the Cougars at the Notre Dame 19 yard line. Houston leading by a score of 27 to 12 and in good field position here once again in the third quarter. Davis has the ball. Keeps it. 15, 10. Continues to drive for the seven yard line. Pete Johnson brought him down. First down and goal to go. Houston at the Notre Dame seven. Well, last year they controlled the wishbone offense. The great running of Earl Campbell, but they just haven't been able to even come close to the mirror. Davis picks up 12 yards here. Got about 200 yards rushing now. Hubert Miller, number 82, brought in the next play. That's Love. Hits inside the five yard line. It'll be second out and goal there. Jay Case made the tackle. Case is from Cincinnati, Ohio. He's a senior. Jeff Weston, a senior from Rochester, New York. Also there, plays just alongside him. Now right, here comes Jurgaitis in with the next play. They alternate tight ends, bringing in plays from Coach Bill Yeoman. Herring's going wide to the left side. Jurgaitis is the tight end right. Officials called time out. They want another ball. Yeah, Chuck Brown, the center, wanted an exchange of footballs. Might have found some ice on that one. So they get another one in play. And it's Herring part of the left side. Second on goal to go. Houston at the Notre Dame five yard line. Davis has got it, and it's a touchdown. Davis took it in at the plan. Well, Houston's giving Notre Dame a lesson to the rear. Look at him, he's happy. Davis trying to go 9-0 in the Cotton Bowl as a quarterback. Beautiful fake inside. Now, this is what I was talking about. When Notre Dame closes it up, the handoff, Davis is going to take it outside, and he goes in unmolested. That's his second touchdown of the day. He's also thrown for one touchdown. So it's 33 to 12 and a conversion attempt coming. And again, it's Hatfield. Hatfield's conversion. It's good. And so as they come back up the field this time, the score is Houston 34 and Notre Dame 12. The Hoogers are running it up. They sure have, and the trouble that Notre Dame has had is they haven't, they haven't made a first down here in the third quarter. Here's the look, here's the fake, the Randy Love inside. Now you see Case tackled him. That is not his problem. He must tackle the handoff man, but Danny Davis, somebody forgot to get him on the outside. Keep in mind that the NBA is coming up on CBS. Sunday, January 14th, you'll see the New York Knicks against the Kansas City Kings. And that'll be a great one. Marvin Webster, Bob McAdoo for the Knicks, Phil Ford, and Otis Birdsong for Kansas City. Chicago Bulls against the Milwaukee Bucks, and the Los Angeles Lakers against the Seattle Supersonics. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar and Coach Lenny Wilkins of Seattle, they were off to a flying start. They're regional games. Check your local list for the game and time in your area. And keep in mind that on CBS, you'll also see the NBA All-Star game from the Silver Dome in Pontiac, Michigan, on February 4th, kicking off is Hatfield. Waymer goes deep, goes out of the end zone. It's a touchback, first and 10 at the 20-yard line. So the Irish get it, but they get it deep in their own territory. Houston is leading by a score of 34 to 12. We have four minutes, 40 seconds left in the third quarter. And Joe Montana comes in now at quarterback. Joe Montana making his first appearance of the second half. He quarterback throughout the entire first half, but during the intermission. Came up with chills and a slight fever, but he's back in there. Montana has the ball, guns it, and it is incomplete. Almost pass interference there. Chris Haynes, Chris Haynes, Haynes is really hot. Haynes is hot. He thinks there was pass interference. Montana on his first play back. A little play action. Trying to hit Haynes on a turn in. Up. A little too close coverage that time by number 10, Gerald, Gerald Cook. Cook. He got away with it. Second down and 10 yards to go.
Chris Haynes this time takes it and goes out of bounds at the 27 yard line. That's his first catch of the day. It is. We were talking to Bill Yeoman in New York recently when he and Danny Davis came to New York, in connection with the announcement that CBS and the Cotton Bowl have signed an agreement for future years. And Bill was saying that at the start of the season, he thought he had a very fine defense, and that actually in only three or four occasions had his defense lived up to his expectations. I think they have today. I don't think he has to worry about that today. Third down and three yards to go. Montana drops back over the middle and incomplete. Trying to get it to Jerome Heavens. Just a bad pass, or maybe Heavens rang a wrong ran a wrong pattern as you see Montana there talking to heavens he was wide open on the little delay over the middle once again Notre Dame has faced the punt they got a new punter in there Bushka who kicked three times here in the third quarter had one block one partially blocked for an average of 25 yards on Alfie is deep for Houston Joe Restick of course is normally the punter he was injured in the first half Bushka's there Across the 50, gets a Notre Dame roll inside the 40. There will be no run back, and it is at the 37-yard line. Now keep in mind that coming up on CBS is the NFC Championship, and that's next Sunday, January 7th at 4.30 p.m. Eastern Time. Uh, both these teams, uh, they figured to be there, Lindsay. The Dallas Cowboys, Roger Staubach will be back next week. Danny White, he did such an excellent job this week right here in Dallas, and then the Rams, and they looked super the other day against the Minnesota Vikings. What a matchup. That summer all, and Tom Brookshire will be at the mic for the NFC Championship on CBS. First and 10 now for Houston. At their 37, Danny Davis. Keeps the football, he gets away, but the whistle had blown. Joe Gramke was there on the tackle. It's gonna be marked at the 39 yard line for a gain of two, which will make it second down and eight yards to go for the Cougars. Is this bal balance rushing Lindsey Davis, a quarterback, 60 yards and 14 carries. Love, 68 yards and 14 carries and King 61 yards on 50. That's what they have, the balance attack of the Houston Cougars. They're leading 34 to 12 over Notre Dame. Herring goes wide to the right side. Davis still has it. He's down at the 41 yard line. Mike Calhoun from Austintown, Ohio made the tackle. It'll be third down and six at the 41. Heimkreider was also there. Heimkreider had a great year for Notre Dame. He's a senior linebacker from Cincinnati, Ohio. Third and six. Houston at the 41. Two and a half minutes left to play in the third quarter. Herring out in the wide right. This is King. Emmett King. To the 44 yard line. That's Gramke. Latched on to him there. Again, the three will make it fourth and three. Pete Johnson also on the tackle, and the punting unit comes on. The first time in the second half that Houston has had the ball in their own territory. Jay Wyatt is coming to do the punting. You see Wimmer dropping back to Notre Dame. Harrison is 10 yards upfield in tandem. High snap is pulled down. Wimmer. At the 13 yard line, Wimmer to the 15, to the 20, up the sideline, and out of bounds. It's going to be marked inside the 30 yard line. Wimmer Chuck Brown forced him out. That was a punt of 44 yards. First down and 10 yards to go, Notre Dame, short of the Notre Dame 29. One minute, 41 seconds left in the third quarter as Joe Montana sprints onto the field to run the attack. Pullahan out in a wide left. Chris Haynes in a wide right. As Heavens with one in room and across the 40 to the 45 and across the 50 and on into Houston territory. Jerome Heavens at the 47-yard line is dropped by Kenny Hatfield. This is the first first down of the second half for Notre Dame, just right up the middle, trap blocking. Jerome Heavens goes for 26. Got into secondary. And he got into Houston territory. 
been a long time since that happened, maybe since the first quarter. Evans now has gone off the field. Buchanan has replaced him at fullback. Montana rolls and keeps. Saw some daylight and wanted to go, but could not quite get through. He was pulled down after a gain of two by Theodos Williams. Second down and eight yards to go for Notre Dame. We have less than a minute remaining in the third quarter, as you see Shasta. Evans has carried 14 times for 70 yards here this afternoon. Chris Haynes to the right side, Pete Lillahan to the left side. Short drop. Montana now going to Chris Haynes, and it is intercepted at the 12-yard line. It is Cook, I think. That's the third interception today for Joe Montana. Elvis Bradley, a junior from Longview, Texas. You see Montana a little trouble. He went to his right. And over and right in the arms of Elvis Bradley, intended for Chris Haynes. Well, it's spotted just outside the 11 on Bradley's interception, and it's first and 10 for Houston. With 32 seconds remaining in the third quarter, there's Elvis Bradley. That's the only way to keep warm on an afternoon like this. Love. At the 12 yard line, it'll be second down and nine. I'm Kreider and Weston made the tackle. Clock is running, it's wound down to 14 seconds. It may be played in the quarter. And now down to eight seconds. We may be played in this period as Hubert Miller brings in the next play. They will not get off another play. Two seconds, one second, and that's that. That's the end of the third quarter with the score, Houston 34, Notre Dame 12. We now pause for a word from your local station. This is Lindsey Nelson with Paul Horning at the Cotton Bowl in Dallas. One quarter to go, and Houston is leading Notre Dame by a score of 34 to 12. Houston has the ball second down, nine yards to go. They have it at their own 12-yard line. Danny Davis has quarterbacked the Cougars throughout. He's been over in conference with his head coach, Bill Yeoman, and he's joining the huddle just there. Willis Adams out to a wide left. Danny Davis keeps it and slips on the cut. Lee Johnson was there. He wanted to fall off inside, but uh, footing is a little wary this afternoon. Gain of a yard on the play, making third down and eight at the 13. The director of athletics at Notre Dame, of course, is Ed Moose Krause, and the director of athletics at Houston is Harry Falk. He's the only director of athletics they've had. Third and eight at the 13. Over and back, no contact. Danny Davis, back to the 12 as Mike Calhoun is hanging on to him. It'll be third down and nine at the 12-yard line. Jay Case also on the tackle. So it's a punting circumstance here. Jay Wyatt comes in to do the punting. Now let's see what Mr. Wyatt can do against the wind. Notre Dame. Weimer. Probably go after the kicker. Fair catch signal goes up and the fair catch is made. Made by Harrison at the 38 yard line. So Notre Dame starts first and 10 at the Houston 38. A 26 yard punt into the wind. So it is 34 to 12 and Notre Dame has the ball. Notre Dame first and 10 at the 39 yard line. Montana turns and throws back and it's incomplete. Haynes, the intended receiver. Gerald Cook covering on the corner, second and 10 at the 39 yard line as you look at Montana. Well, he was wide open, Lindsay, but Jose Taylor, number 90, a sophomore from Longview, as 
our cohort at CBS, George Allen says, a delivery sack. Yes. Pete Pallas comes in at fullback. Vegas Ferguson to the tailback. Montana. Incomplete. Trying to get it to Maztec, but not very close. Third and 10 at the 39-yard line. He liked to slow up on that little rollout to his left and have time enough to plant his feet, Lindsay, to throw the football. There's the stats on the day, seven out of 21 for 78. But the pressure defense, making Joe throw the ball a little bit too quick. Jerome Heavens back in at fullback on a third and 10. And he backs a split for Montana. Intercepted at the 25 yard line. And returned to the 34. David Hodge, number 42, one of the co captains. A great linebacker, picked uh, it off. He's going to be back next year, Lindsay. Here you see David Hodge right there to the right of your screen. Montana drops back. Trying to hit a turn in pattern, and look at this interception. One handed interception by David Hodge. Houston's ball. It has been a cold and frustrating afternoon for head coach Dan Devine of the Fighting Irish. Love carrying, and he got it up to the 40 yard line as Jeff Weston came in to make the tackle. Along with Mike Calhoun on the tackle. It's quite a story right there. Turnovers, Notre Dame six, Houston three. And Houston has taken advantage of almost every one. Second down, four yards to go for the Cougars, who have dominated play in this Cotton Bowl game since the first quarter when Notre Dame took an early lead. King carried and was popped by Heimkreider for no gain. So it'll be third down and four yards to go at the 40-yard line. Now, this is the first time that Notre Dame. Uh, to the 44 yard line, trying to get to the sticks, and uh, it's very close. Jeff Weston uh, on the tackle, along with Pete Johnson. As they spot it, it looks just inches short. And the punting unit comes in, Jay Wyatt. On a fourth and inches, Wyatt is in deep punt formation. Into the wind and it's held up, but it gets a Houston roll across the 35 and it goes out of bounds at the 33 yard line. First and 10. For Notre Dame, they have the ball at their own 33. 23 yard punt. On Saturday, January 6th, for three and a half hours, the new look CBS Sports Spectacular premieres for the East West Shrine football game. And then it's a fight of the week with Roberto Duran and Monroe Brooks. That's highlights of that fight and the Hollywood stunt competition, plus the NFL Cheerleader Classic. How do they judge that? <laughs> I don't know. Well, there will be some pretty ladies there. You That's January that. 6th, the premiere of the action pack new look CBS Sports Spectacular. Don't miss it. Backed up at the 34-yard line. Evans carried the ball, and he got about a yard on the play, so it'll be second down. And nine yards to go. Oglesby and David Hyde made the tackle. And Dini is on at a wide receiver. You saw Pete Pallish just come to that huddle. Ron Evans is going off. And Dini in a wide left. Montana. Pumps and rolls. And throws incomplete. Yeah, you throw it that hard on a day like this, it's so cold. Ferguson. Very tough to hold on to the football. Look at him holding his right hand. His hands are, I guarantee you right now, frozen. It'll be third down and nine yards to go. Notre Dame's ball out there, 34, and there goes Vegas, and Fer Vegas Ferguson off the field. Evans has come back in. 
Evans has carried the ball more times than any man in Notre Dame history in his career. Montana back. And that was uncomplete. He gunned that one to his tight end. Mass tight. Flags down at the line of scrimmage. Holding is indicated against Notre Dame. I know Joel wants to fire it, Lindsay, but on a day like this, if he does have a receiver open, he should take something off of the football. Just make sure of the completion first, rather than trying to fire it to the open man because it's that, just that much more difficult to catch the football. They have declined the holding penalty to bring up fourth down, and that brings the Notre Dame punting unit onto the field. Pushka is coming in to do the punting. Donnie Love is dropped back with Linnell Fee to field the punt. They are in tandem. Houston is leading by a score of 34 to 12. Well, Bushka bobbled in a moment, but we can regain uh, control. Fair catch signal at the 21, taken there by Fee. It's first and 10 Houston at the Cougar 21 yard line. 45 yard punt. So we have 10 minutes, 48 seconds left to play in the game. Houston, 34, Notre Dame, 12. On a day like this, that is not a bad idea. First down and 10 yards to go for Houston. They have the ball on their own 21-yard line. Danny Davis still in there at quarterback. Rolls to the weak side and guns it incomplete. Intended for Willis Adams. It's be second and 10 at the 21-yard line, and Randy Harrison was covering defensively. Joe Rustic was in the first half. Normally, Rustic plays that free safety, and it's now being played by Randy Harrison. Here comes Hubert Miller into the huddle with the next play from the Houston sideline. Adams in a wide left. King, Garrett, and Heimkreider was there with Gramke. Again, of about a yard, make it third down and nine yards to go. Houston leading 34 to 12, and a victory in the Cotton Bowl over Notre Dame would be indeed a big one for the Cougars. They had a struggle, as we animated once before, to get into the Southwest Conference, to get proper recognition. They used to try to get teams of national reputation on their schedule to get some attention to their football program. Well, they're getting a lot of it today. It's incomplete. Herring is holding it up, but the official over there said, no, he trapped it. I think he caught it. <laughs> he may not know, being not able to feel it with the fingertips. This is Eric Herring, the flanker. Roll out left, he comes back to the weak side. Herring is all alone down the right sideline. Well, I don't know. That's very, very close. It looked as if he got it to me. Well, he's not going to argue the point. The punting unit is in with Jay Wyatt. Deep punt formation, and he bobbles it, picks it up, kicks it up into the air, partially blocked. Gets to the 22-yard line and is taken there. And so it will be Notre Dame's ball. There's a penalty marker. There's a penalty marker thrown out of bounds. That was Belden who took it. Well, the spot is being marked near the 20-yard line, and then we have a penalty to be considered. I think it was Albert Newhouse, a cornerback for Houston. Let's check it out. That's it, Albert Newhouse, number 37, tackling out of bounds. Personal foul. So that one will be in force now. By Pete Williams, the referee, and... It will go half the distance down to the 10-yard line. The Notre Dame offense has been able to generate only 34 yards in this the second half. Set so the 11-yard line. Well, tonight the coach faces a star player been on dropping out of school on the White Shadow on CBS. Then BJ plays Papa to a Korean family on MASH. What a show that is. Then there's one day at a time and Lou Grant. That's tonight's lineup on CBS. 
First down and 10 yards to go. The ball is on the 11 yard line of Houston in Notre Dame possession. Houston is leading by a score of 34 to 12. We have nine minutes, 51 seconds left to play in this game. Notre Dame is reconvening the huddle and uh, over there they're trying to find a little heat. Motion across. Vegas Ferguson. Just inside the 10 yard line and he's stopped by Bradham. End of a couple of yards will make it second and eight at the nine. Put it up. Here comes Pete Buchanan in there at fullback. Vegas Ferguson goes off and they move Heavens to tailback. Montana rolling. Rendinger incomplete in the end zone. Well, tight ends have had trouble all day long. He slipped down there or he could have caught that pass for the touch. That will make it a third and eight at the nine yard line. All bundled up. This is Dallas, Texas. Deep in the heart of Texas on New Year's Day. I don't believe it. There's little doubt that this is the coldest of all the Cotton Bowl games, which began in 1937. Third down and eight. The ball is just inside the 10 yard line, outside the nine. Montana short drop and rolls now. Stops and throws back. Incomplete. Fourth down coming. A whole flock of red shirts there. That was intended for number 25, Tommy Ebner, but he dropped it. It looked as if it was intended for the safety man, I'm sure. Montana there now on fourth down. They go for it here with 9-7 remaining, and Houston leading 34-12. to There's little doubt of that. Palace is coming in with the next play. Buchanan goes off. Ball is on the 10-yard line. Contact made on the line of scrimmage, and Marcus is thrown. Losing all their concentration now, Lindsey. Jim Hartman jumps off sides, left guard position. Montana has completed the pass in the last nine attempts. Procedure penalty against Notre Dame will cost them five. Got to throw it in the end zone. It'll be fourth and 14 at the 15. <laughs> Here comes Buchanan back in for Palace. Chris Haynes in a wide left. Pete Hulahan in the wide right for Joe Montana. Montana. Look for Haynes, he's covered, and he gets rid of it, just barely. There's Leonard Mitchell, number 70, the gentleman I was talking about in the first half, who plays basketball, also for Houston. What an athlete. And he's quick, Lindsey. So the ball goes over on downs. But there's a penalty marker to be checked out. Hold it. Downfield penalty marker. It's being reported now to the referee. Personal foul against Notre Dame. A personal foul has been called against Notre Dame. This is a dead ball penalty. A 15 yard penalty will be assessed. 15 yards is marked off against the Irish, putting the ball out there at the 29 yard line. Dead, dead ball, ball foul. foul. Notre Dame gives it up. They give it up on the dead ball foul at his first and 10. Tomorrow night on CBS, The Incredible Journey and Dr. Meg Laurel. That was Delrick Brown in there at quarterback, throwing over to the sideline to Willis Adams. 
incomplete. So Danny Davis is out of the ballgame in the back of quarterback Delbert Brown is in there. Tomorrow night, Lindsay Wagner stars in a three-hour epic of courage and love, the incredible journey of Dr. Meg Laurie, the story of a beautiful young doctor who battles backward superstition to bring hope and comfort to a poverty-stricken land. A great cast, Miss Jane Wyman, Andrew Duggan, and Gary Lockwood also star. As a late pitch, taken by Emmett King. Bobby Leopold was there on the tackle at the 35-yard line. There he is. Always one of them, right? <laughs> he's got some antifreeze in him. Yeah, he's, he's not running on regular. It's third <laughs> down and five at the 35-yard line. Runs the option. And there's a pitch to Love. And Love is taken down at the 33 yard line. Jim Browner on the tackle. That'll King bring up a fourth for Houston. Emmett King has 76 yards and Love 71. And they've been content here now for the past 10 or 12 minutes just to sit on the lead. They're leading 34 to 12. And Jay White is trying to keep his hands warm as he. Backs up there in deep punt formation to prepare to receive the snap. Weimer has dropped back deep for Notre Dame. Well, that one is blocked. And Notre Dame gets the football. That ball can be advanced. And it's being advanced right into the end zone. And it is taken in there for a touchdown. It was Cicci, Steve Cicci. Steve Cicci, you can, you can advance a block punt if it's caught in the air. Uh, so Notre Dame has its first touchdown since the first quarter. Here's the punt block right here. Watch Steve Cicci comes up, catches it on the fly, and then breaks loose out of a few tackles and goes in for the first touchdown since the first quarter for Notre Dame. Conversion attempt coming now for the Irish. Seven minutes, 25 seconds remaining to be played in this ball game. They're gonna go for two. Right now it's 34 to 18 with the conversion attempt coming and rolling is Montana and he throws and it's gathered in for two points. Taken in the end zone for two points by Vegas Ferguson. And so the score is Houston 34, Notre Dame 20. Steve Cicci, who ran the block punt in for the touchdown for Notre Dame, a freshman from Fargo, will kick off and dropping back Eddie Wright and Lonell Fee to receive it for Houston. Fee at the 11 yard line to the 15, Fee to the 20, and he is stopped at the 24-yard line, where Houston gets the ball first down, 10 yards to go at their own 24. Let's see, we want to give credit to Tony Belden, the freshman for Notre Dame, who blocked the punt. All right, we have seven minutes, 18 seconds left to play in the game, and the quarterback coming in is Delrick Brown. He's a junior from Lufkin, Texas, 5'11", 160-pounder. Yep, two series ago, if Notre Dame could have put some points on the board, this might have turned into an interesting uh, last five or six minutes. They had a first 10 on the 11-yard line. Brown still has it at the 30-yard line. Hamkrider hanging on to him. It's second down and four yards to go. Notre Dame desperately trying to tackle the football now. And this is a... An official's timeout for the injury. A Houston injury. It's Chuck Brown, the center, who is down. You know, we've had five block punts today. Three actual block punts and two partial blocks. Chuck Brown, who's really Done a fine job, one of the captains there. The senior, Missouri City, Texas. Really done a fine job for Houston. 
holding his arm immobile as he comes off the field. Chuck Brown there it is second and four for Houston. They have the ball at the 30. Did you guess that he's a weightlifter? <laughs> That's love, Gary, and he gets it to the 33-yard line. Mike Calhoun made the tackle. It's a little short of first down yards. It'll be third and about one. Heimkreider was there also. About two yards to go. Third and about two as they spot it. Delrick Brown brings the Cougars up. A little short. He is a little short. It'll be fourth down, about a yard to go. Here's a final score. Alabama has defeated Penn State by a final score of 14 to 7. Running in, it's coming on, and Jay Wyatt will do the kicking. That's Waymer dropping back for Notre Dame. Well, that's some kind of snap. We got it off. Hits at the 45. Rolls inside the 40-yard line. Call it 39, first and 10. A 26-yard punt. So Notre Dame gets it in their own territory. The final we just gave you is being announced on the public address system to the fans here at the Cotton Bowl now, the Alabama victory over Penn State. Penn State, of course, went undefeated during the regular season. Alabama lost one game. They lost that to the Southern Cal. Five minutes, 37 minutes, seconds left to play here. Montana. On the money this time, completes it. Inside the 45-yard line to Dean Mazdak, the freshman tight end. First down and 10 yards to go. Elvis Bradley made the tackle. 16-yard pickup. Notre Dame trying desperately to get one, go for two, and come back with the onside kick. Dean Mastic, the big freshman, 6'4", 230. It's Jerome Heaven moving over into a left set. Montana going to Heavens. He's got it. Evans is out of bounds at the 14-yard line, where it's another first and 10 for Notre Dame. Now yeah, Montana's getting hot. He's called the comeback kid. He's done this before down the sidelines. Jerome Evans makes a good over the shoulder catch and he's out of bounds. 30 yard pickup on the pass. Put it in first and 10. Houston's leading 34 to 20 in this game. Montana throws on the run, incomplete, trying there's to get it to Houlihan. There's a penalty marker throw at the two-yard line. Montana rolling out right, trying to get it to Houlihan on the square-out pattern, Lindsay. It was Gerald Cook, number 10. Right here, Cook comes over the body. Interference call makes it first down and goal to go. Notre Dame at the two-yard line. Ball first and 10 on about the 11-yard line. They didn't get a point. They spot it on the three-yard line. Hail back, and he's stacked up about the two. Where it'll be second down. Go to <coughs> Vegas Ferguson carried Kenny Hatfield, and Sam Proctor came to make the stop. Dan Devine. Walk across the way. Now, they should get in and out of the huddle as quickly as possible, Lizzie. This is what sometimes befuddles me about football teams. They take almost 20 or 30 seconds. You should call your play and get up to the line of scrimmage as quickly as possible. Goal to go. Evans. Stopped outside the one by David Hodge, the linebacker. It'll be third down and goal to go. Notre Dame wants timeout. They do. Notre Dame wants to talk it over. So they stop the clock with four minutes, 22 seconds left to play in the game. And Houston is leading by a score of 34 to 20. When play is resumed, Notre Dame has the ball third down and goal to go outside the one yard line.
That's Joe Montana bringing the Irish up third down and goal to go inside the two-yard line of Houston. Montana's rolling. He's going to try to take it in, and he's got it. Touchdown, Montana. Notre Dame is on the board. Joe's still down. He really made a great determination, Lindsay, to get over the end zone. Montana on a rollout left. Option runner pass right here. You see the receivers trying to maneuver free in the end zone. Montana makes his mind up right here to get it into the end zone, and he does. So don't go away. This could be quite a finish. 34 to 26. There's Joe Montana. Notre Dame has just had a huddle along the sideline to determine what they're going to do now with a conversion attempt coming. Well, they come back this far. They got to go for two. That's what they're going to do. They're going to go for two. There's eight points differential right now. Montana's the quarterback. Rolls, and he's going to try to get to the flag. Now throws, and it's good for two points. He hit Haynes. He found Chris Haynes, his favorite pass receiver, and gunned it right in there. So Notre Dame picked up two on the conversion to score. It's Houston 34, Notre Dame 28. Four minutes, 15 seconds left to play. Ball, Steve Cicci is seeing the ball up. Well, Houston is up there expecting an onside kickoff, Lindsay, but there's plenty of time left, four minutes and 15 seconds. And I think the best thing to do, if Cicci can get a hold of it, if he kicks it in the end zone, of course, he's not a long kicker. They're, they miss Chuck Mayo in this position right here. There's plenty of time. I think the most important thing, since they've blocked the last two punts, is to keep Houston deep in their own territory. Got to let Belden hold it for him now. An indication, I should think, that he's going to try to get it far downfield. Four minutes, 15 seconds left to play. Houston's leading 34 to 28. That's a six-point margin. And here comes Steve Cicci. And it is a touchback taken in the end zone by Eddie Wright. It'll be brought out and put in play by Houston first and 10. They have the ball at their own 20-yard line. Well, Houston set on that lead. They built up a 34 to 12 lead only to see the fourth quarter win make a difference. And Notre Dame with a few breaks, a couple block punts, and they're right back in it. And here comes Danny Davis and that'll run the attack. Delrick Brown had relieved Davis earlier, but now it's Davis back in action since the lead has shrunk to six points. Now Houston must very definitely guard against the turnover. Lindsay. The first group is back in. And has a pitch to Love at the 20, 25. Penalty markers thrown. Randy Harrison made the tackle. But there's a marker to be checked out. And it is holding against Houston. There were some observers saying before this ball game that the Cotton Bowl should be one of the most exciting of all the ball games because there might be 50 points scored. There have been 62 points scored, and we may not be through yet. There's the penalty mark off now against the Houston Cougars. Uh, that tightens up things as far as Bill Yeomans is concerned. He had a first down. They got outside. Only to be penalized half the distance of the goal line holding. First and 18 at the 12-yard line for the Cougars. Manny Davis brings them up. Close to the right side. Davis gonna run it. Slips down. At the 18-yard line, he picked up six. It'll be second down and 12. He also stayed in bounds, Lindsay. That clock that you see in the inset is still running. Wamer and Pete Johnson were there. And the clock runs on with Houston leading 34 to 28. Need a couple of first downs, and Houston will have one. Their second. Cotton Bowl in only two appearances. And Danny Davis at the controls of both wins, but Notre Dame here needs the football. Davis going to a high count. Gives it to King. King struggles out to the 23-yard line where Steve Heimkreider and Mike Calhoun close him off again to five yards and make it third and seven. 
And here comes Hubert Miller in with the next play for the Cougars from Bill Yeoman. We have two minutes, 59 seconds left to play in this game. The Fighting Irish want the football. Houston wants to hold on to it, pick up the first down if they possibly can, and then run it out. They're leading by a score of 34 to 28. And Devine along the sideline. Third down and seven yards to go. Andy Davis. Incomplete. Incomplete. Tried to get it to Willis Adams. Dave Wehmer covered, and that'll make it a fourth down. Adams had it momentarily, but that young man, number 34, Dave Wehmer, broke it up. So and now Houston has to give it up as the punting unit comes in. They blocked the last two punts. Jay Wyatt. Back there, you saw Weimer deep for Notre Dame. They'll try to block the punt, and if it's a high punt, if it gets it Rolls off. it back. It's center rolled it back. Ball hits up at the 40 to the 45. Takes a Houston bounce to the 50. Weimer dives on it at the 49-yard line of Houston. Notre Dame gets the ball in Houston territory. First and 10, a 28-yard punt. Very touchy. Weimer falling on that football. If he didn't get it, it would have been ruled a fumble. 26-yard punt. Got a good roll. So now, Notre Dame trails by six points. Two minutes, 25 seconds remain to be played in the game. The Irish with the ball first and 10 at the Houston 49-yard line. Joe Montana was a sophomore. This happened four times. He brought Notre Dame's back. Turn out, and it's complete to Haynes. Chris Haynes simply moves it to the 43-yard line. Picked up six on the play to be second and four. Tommy Ebner was there on the tackle for Houston. There's little doubt that the wind has been a big factor in this game. It has been the team that has had the wind at its advantage that has done best in this football game here this afternoon. There's only been one touchdown scored against the wind, and that was because of a turnover in Notre Dame early in the first half. Second down and four yards to go. Montana, penalty marker is dropped at the line of scrimmage. Montana knocked off his feet at the 50-yard line, but there's a marker. Good coverage that time by Houston. Everybody was covered. Montana had to eat it, eat the football. Got a preliminary signal here. Illegal motion against Notre Dame. Decline. Loss of seven on the play. Got two downs to pick up 11 yards. Third and 11. Buchanan is brought in the next play. Montana brings them up. Montana. And it is complete. Taken by Hulahan. That's enough for the first down, Lindsay. It's a first 11. First down and 10 yards to go, and it is near the 36-yard line. Nice concentration by the freshman, Pete Houlihan. 6'4", 215 pounds. It's going to be a great one before he's finished. A 14-yard pickup on the sideline pattern. Right there, Houlihan's got it, steps out of bounds to stop the clock. Houlihan is a sophomore from Liverpool, New York. Here's a first and 10 at the 36-yard line. Montana. Montana's gonna run it, he's at the 30 yard line. Drops the ball, the scramble is on. Montana. And Houston got the ball. Montana had the first down, Lindsey trying to run the football. He got hit from the blind side. He hit his arm, he dropped the football. Let's take a look. Here it is. He wants to throw the football. Right up the middle is a gaping hole. Now watch, he's got the football in one hand and he gets hit there. He didn't get hit too hard, but on the right elbow and he coughs up the football. Tommy Ebner came out of the stack with the football when it was finally unstacked and it is first and 10 now at the 20 yard line for Houston. One minute, 50 seconds left to play. The seventh turnover for Notre Dame, four interceptions and three fumbles. First and 10 for Houston. Well, they try love, and he has stopped at the 18-yard line for a loss of two. It'll be second down and 12 yards to go. Gramke, along with Pete Johnson, made the stop. Bob Golick was injured in the first half of this ball game, and now we get a timeout signal. 
And it is timeout Notre Dame to stop the clock with one minute 38 seconds left to play in the game. <laughs> Most of Miracle come back. Montana had the first down. He had it, and that is Montana there being controlled by some of his teammates. He had run for enough yardage, but the ball was shaken loose. Houston recovered, and Houston leads 34 to 28 with one minute 38 seconds left. Notre Dame has one timeout left. The play is resumed. They have it second down. Houston does. 12 yards to go at their own 18. It's been a strange football game here in this Scott Bowl as. Notre Dame dominated the first quarter of play, and then Houston came back and dominated the second and third quarters and part of the fourth, and then Notre Dame came with a flurry here in the fourth quarter. Seemed as if whoever had to win, Lindsay put points on the board. That's exactly what they did. And the cold, cold weather caused a number of turnovers as it was impossible to handle all the last two snaps from center. Back there in punt formation, Houston have been rather strange, but they managed to get them off. And now here comes Danny Davis. And had a run the attack for the Cougars. Uh, King tries it. I am Kreider. And Case there on the tackle. Spotted at the 16-yard line. Loss of two will make it third down and 14. And they'll have a chance to block the punt, Lindsay. We want to thank the people from Notre Dame, President Theodore M. Hesberg, Executive Vice President Reverend Edmund P. Joyce, the Director of Athletics, Moose Krauss, the Sports Information Director, Roger Valdeseri, Head Coach Dan Devine and his staff. Rolling is Davis. Gets it out there to the 24-yard line. We have 45 seconds left to play in this game as Notre Dame calls another timeout. Heimkreider on the tackle. <coughs> Notre Dame has stopped the clock. Let's go down now to Frank Lieber along the sideline. Everybody here on the Houston bench uh, is scared to death as a matter of Remembering what happened against Southern Cal, most people seem to think that the wind has certainly been the big factor this afternoon. The team that has had the wind has done well in each quarter that they have had it. Still not over, though. All right, Frank, it's Jay Wide who will be going to deep punt formation. We want to thank the University of Houston, President Dr. Philip G. Hoffman, Chancellor Barry Munitz, Director of Athletics Harry Fox, Sports Information Director Ted Nance, Head Coach Bill Yeoman and his staff. Our thanks to the Cotton Bowl Athletic Association, Chairman of the Board Buddy Dyke. President John P. Thompson, first vice president John F. Scoble, second vice president Vice President J. L. Huffines, executive vice president Jim Brock, administrative assistant Susan Stokes, director of information Wilbur Evans, director of press hospitality Arnold Hayes, director of pageantry Harry Barton. Our thanks to all for making our stay in Dallas, Texas at this Cotton Bowl game so very pleasant. Now, back in deep punt formation, goes Jay Wyatt. Weimer is deep for Notre Dame, standing at the 50-yard line. 46 seconds left to play in the game. Houston's leading 34 to 28. The snap. Got it off under a heavy rush. Notre Dame was off sides. It is rolling along the 45-yard line of Houston. Penalty markers are down. It will not be a first down. It was fourth down and six. It was. Fourth and six. Offsides against Notre Dame. Well, quite a decision for Bill Yeomans here. Whether he wants to try another punt or whether. Dan Devine peering onto the field. The preliminary signal given was Yeah, do you want to make it fourth and one and punt it again with a five yard advantage or do you want to let it stand up there at the 45 yard line? Well, I don't know. Notre Dame is out of timeouts. Number two. Uh, thought to take into consideration. They've already blocked two punts. I think we ought to point out, we know that Bill's name is Yeoman. We know there's no S. We just try to give him a few extra <laughs> letters from time right. to time, do all we can for him. He's a great man, a great sense of humor, and the kids love him. One of the outstanding football coaches in this country, 17 years at the University of Houston. 
Well, they're going to mark off the penalty here now. And they're going to send Danny Davis back out there. It's going to be fourth down and about a foot to go, and they're going to go for it, I think. They're afraid of getting the punt block or a bad snap from center. 35 seconds on the clock. 35 seconds. It is fourth down and about a foot to go. Houston has the ball at the 29-yard line. And they're going to go for it as Danny Davis comes out there. Houston is leading 34 to 28. 35 seconds left to play in the Cotton Bowl game. I don't think he got it. I don't think he did either. King uh, took the handoff and hit in there. The Notre Dame players don't think he did, but uh, they're not the officials, so they'll spot the ball and then take the look. It's Notre short. Dame takes the ball on downs. It's at the 29-yard line of Houston. So the Irish come up there. They have no timeouts remaining. They are up there ready to go as soon as the ball is marked ready for play, and then the clock will start. 28 seconds left to play in the game. Houston leading 34 to 28. That's a margin of six points. Montana. 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 Well, he'll have to get it to the sidelines, and... He goes across the sideline marker, but the spot is being marked up there at the 18. It is a first down for Notre Dame. And that'll stop the clock, Lindsay. In college football, the first clock does stop. stop. Right. 15 seconds. Notre Dame is ready to go first and 10 at the 18-yard line. Montana pops this one, and it's Chris Haynes shouldering inside the 10-yard line and down to the 8. What a finish. What a finish at the Cotton Bowl. The clock says six seconds left to play in the game. First down for Notre Dame and goal to go at the Houston eight yard line. This should be it, Lindsay. Time for one play. And if they're very lucky on a very quick release, they might get two, but I doubt it very much. Houston called the timeout. Houston called the timeout. And now Montana goes over to talk to Dan Devine. Well, he called the timeout. Haynes did get out of bounds and stop the clock anyway. Houston wanted to go over their defensive alignment here, and Montana, likewise, talking to Dan Devine over there. They've got time for one, and if they're lucky, two. So it's all come down to this. The Houston Cougars, 34. The Fighting Irish of Notre Dame, 28. Six seconds left on the clock, and this the 43rd <laughs> annual Cotton Bowl game in Dallas, Texas. Montana, who played the first half, then did not come out after the halftime intermission. And the report from the team position was that he had become chilled and was running a slight temperature because of the weather conditions. Then came out to relieve Tim Cagle, who had relieved him. And Montana has sparked the surge of Notre Dame here in the closing moments. Houston, a stout defense during the season and a stout defense at times here this afternoon. And they're trying to throw it up here now at a first and goal at the eight yard line with six seconds left to play. Montana, incomplete. Three Trying seconds to hands. Three seconds, two seconds on the clock. Two seconds left on the clock, second and goal at the eight. Now Montana is looking over to the sideline to get his next play. Merv Johnson. Dan Devine over there. Well, you couldn't want a better finish. Could not possibly. Two seconds left to play. Clock will start on the snap. Houston 34, Notre Dame 28. Montana going. And it's a touchdown. Hey. A touchdown taken at the corner. Unbelievable, unbelievable finish. Houston on top, 34 to 12, and now it's all tied up. 34 apiece. Was it in bounds or not? It was ruled a touchdown. A touchdown. Montana to Chris Hayes. Let's see if we can pick it up. Let's catch the ca camera angle here. The back go goes out of the backfield. Montana on the sidelines. And from our vantage point, we can't tell where the feet. In college football, you only have to have one foot in. Notre Dame has scored the touchdown. Right here, Lindsay. There's a couple of Houston people just in the camera angle. Haynes caught the football. And here comes the all-important extra point. It's tied 34-34. Joe Yunus in to attempt. It's up. And it's good. Joe Yunus it. from Dallas, Texas, 
kicked the extra point and the game is over. Notre Dame has won it 35 to 34. What a finish, Lindsay. I've never seen anything like it. Notre Dame completely dead, came back in the fourth quarter to win it by one. Notre Dame has won it 35 to 34 as Joe Yunus kicked the untying point. He is a native of Dallas, Texas. What a finish it was. There's still controversy down there, Lindsay. Well, there's controversy, but this 43rd annual Cotton Bowl is history. Offensive fireworks, many had said this would be the game that would have the most exciting time of all, and it certainly was that. Although there still is confusion on the field, that is Dan Devine, the head coach of the Fighting Irish, but they have begun to scatter now. However, the teams are still along the sidelines. Nobody is headed out anymore, and perhaps there was a penalty on the conversion. Maybe not enough people on the field. Looks as if Notre Dame's going to line up for another extra point. And uh, having been penalized, Notre Dame has been penalized, and so they're going to try another conversion. It's still tied, as you were. It's still tied 34-34. Five-yard penalty. Five-yard penalty against Notre Dame, and Eunice again. We'll have Knafel holding for him. What pressure. Knafel will hold and Joe Eunice will have to try to do it again. It's down, Eunice kicks it and it is good. Now Notre Dame has won the football game, 35 to 34, having to do it a second time, having sustained a five yard penalty. Anything you want to say? Oh, I don't know what to say, Lindsay. Houston's got to be just unbelievably heartbroken over this loss. They were coasting along, only to see Notre Dame come back, and Montana has done it again. He has, in fact. Joe Montana has bought them from behind, so now this is Lindsey Nelson from Paul Horning and Frank Lieber saying so long from the Cotton Bowl in Dallas, Texas, and from all of us to all of you, a very happy new year. The 1979 Cotton Bowl Classic has been sponsored by the General Motors Parts Division. Budweiser, the king of beers. When you say Budweiser, you've said it all. And by Buick and its dealers who invite you to see the new Buicks during their holiday get-together. The 1979 Cotton Bowl Classic has been a presentation of CBS Sports. <laughs>